Sausalito Harbor, San Francisco Bay, 1891. Last call for Crystal, all aboard! Last call for San Francisco Ferry! Well, better take myself aboard, I guess. Thanks for a restful weekend, Charlie. I like the fog. Presses in with images, don't you find, Humphrey? Hmm. Cotton wool, blankets, comfort. Shroud, hall. Ah. Well, thank goodness it doesn't matter if my images are banal. I'm only a lowly critic. I do agree with you about the fog, though, Charlie. It does somehow stimulate the sensibility. Cuts one off. Makes you realize it's only you and the swirling mystery. On the contrary. Makes me realize how, how interconnected we all are. For instance, I want to cross San Francisco Bay in the fog and don't have a clue how to go about it under my own steam, so I need the captain up there in his wheelhouse. You're a sentimentalist and a reactionary, Humphrey. A throwback aristocrat, in fact. The world arranged just so for sir's convenience. <laughs> that is a tad unkind, Charlie. I do have my uses. Why, why, just now I saw a fellow going aboard carrying this month's Atlantic magazine. With your Edgar Allan Poe S in it, a fellow traveler indeed. Exactly so. <laughs> the skipper up there isn't just my servant. His special knowledge permits the magazine reader to sit back in safety and comfort to partake of my special knowledge. Division of labor is what I'm talking about. All ashore, let's go to shore. Ah, uh, get aboard, Humphrey, you smug old thing. <laughs> go to shore, mister. Give me that bag there. Oh, thank you. Well, so long, Charlie. Thanks for an agreeable weekend. I'm going to send you some civilized reading matter, though. Too much Schopenhauer is unhealthy. Well, the collected essays of Humphrey Van Waden, you mean? Ha! You could do a lot worse. What'll you do for the rest of the day? Lose myself in the fog. I've an idea for a poem. I look forward to it. You'll probably never see it. Nonsense! Go to it! The fog's given me an essay title, too. Division of Labor, a plea for the artist's freedom. Meanwhile, life is elsewhere. So long, Humphrey. Good evening. Nothing good about it that I can see. It's fog like this turns a skipper's hair gray before his time. Oh, surely not. They have all the latest navigational aids, don't they? No substitute for savvy. How about this here tide that's rushing out through the Golden Gate? How fast is she ebbing? What's adrift, eh? Ah, a nautical man, I take it. Thirty years on a sealing schooner. Grand life. Nothing better. But the sea's full of surprises even for the oldest hand. Listen to that, will you? Hmm? A bell buoy. And we're atop of it. See him altering the course? Mm. That's another ferry boat of some sort. And there, do you hear that? Blown by mouth. Some scow schooner, most likely. Better watch out, Mr. Schooner Man. <laughs> ah, I thought so. Now hell's a poppin' for somebody. Now they're paying their respects to each other and trying to get clear. What's that one? It's quite different. A steam schooner, near as I can judge. Crawling in from the heads against the tide. Hello. Somebody coming our way. He seems to be going at quite a lick. Yeah, he's walking right along. Guess he don't hear us yet. Wind's in the wrong direction. Hmm. The ferry boat. I reckon so, or he wouldn't be keeping up such a cliff. My God, would you look at that? Jumping out of the fog like the devil himself. A steamer. Why doesn't he see us? He does see us, but it's too late. Can you swim? No. Me neither. Grab hold of something and hang on. Uh. Here, mister. Uh. Get this life jacket out. What? Thank you. Is she sinking? You bet she's sinking, gadgets and all. And see the tackles, Cam. Them boats is going nowhere. I'm going to see what I can do to help them women and children. Shut up, God damn you! Well, Shut up! Scream don't drive me crazy. Good luck to you, mister! <laughs> The 
The Sea Wolf by Jack London. Starring Jack Claff as Wolf Larsen, Kerry Shale as Humphrey Van Weyden, and Shelley Thompson as Maud Brewster. Episode 1. Damn near froze, it looks like. Yeah, poor fella. But I think he's coming round. <coughs> yeah, hey, that'll do, Johnson. Can't you see your blooming well rubbed all the gents' skin off? <laughs> stop, stop them. They're screaming. Easy now, mister. Take it easy, you're safe. Ah, uh, you're all right now, sir. <coughs> Go ahead and get out. No, you haven't got to do nothing. Just keep still, you'll be fine. There, I'll drink this, sir. Some coffee I'll brewed special for you. It'll do you good. Much obliged, I... My thanks to you, Mr. Johnson. My name is Johnson, not Johnson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mm. Permit me to, to shake your hand. Well, I'll run down and take a look over my kit for some clothes for you. Oh, thank you. <coughs> oh, forgive me. My head. I understand. What kind of tub is this that's pitching us all over the place? With respect, sir, this ain't no, no. tub. You're aboard the 80 ton <coughs> schooner Ghost. She's a little over 90 feet and has a lead keel, which makes her very stable, even with the big spread of sail she carries. Well, that, that's reassuring, I suppose. Where's she bound? Southwest out of Frisco, bound seal hunting to Japan. Japan? I must see the captain. <laughs> Easy I... now. Best get dressed first. The captain is Wolf Larsen. Wolf? Wolf, is that his name? Is what men call him. I never heard his other name. You don't seem too keen, Mr. Johnson. He's the skipper, and that's that. But if it was me, I'd sail the ghost different. I see. Well, sooner I'm ashore, the better. No offense, sir, but if you're meaning to tackle the captain, you'd better speak soft with him. He is mad this morning. The mate... Here! You better sling your hook, Johnson. The old man will be wanting you on deck, and this ain't no day to be falling foul of him. Uh, aye, aye. Mark my words, mister. I will. Thank you again, Mr. Johnson. Well, here we are, sir. Some brogans for your feet, one undershirt and shirt, and me spare pair of overalls. Oh! oh steady now. Oh. Here, let me give you a hand. Oh, thank you. My head's not... Uh, oh. Don't you fret. I'll soon have you right. Oh. Oh. Oh, my! You have got a blooming soft skin, haven't you? More like a girl's. Hey, oh, there, oh, that's the way. Sorry about the smell, sir. It was all put away wet. Oh, and whom do I have to thank for this? Uh, Mugridge, sir. Thomas Mugridge, ship's cook. Sir, at your service. All right, sir. Thomas, I won't forget you when my clothes are dry. And now, if you'll show me the way, I must find the skipper. Certainly, sir, but listen, go easy. The old man's got the black dog on. We just lost the first mate, see? Lost him, did you say? Carried aboard in Frisco, he was dead drunk. And now, he's just dead. 
Mind you, whether that's from the drink or the seawater the old man was sluicing him down with, I don't know. If you ask me, he probably drowned. My God, he... Uh, well, anyway, he never came round. Popped his clogs a few minutes ago, and the old wolf's mighty mad. Svensson! Hi, Captain. Get a needle and sew this trunken garbage up. You'll find some old canvas in the sail locker. Make it do. Aye, aye, sir. What will I put him to weight him down, sir? We'll see to that. Cookie, you've stretched that neck of yours just about enough skulking there. Go below and fill the sack with coal. Yes, sir. I don't suppose any of you men have got a Bible, so we'll drop him over without any palaver. Unless our castaway has the burial service at sea off by heart. You there, you a preacher, maybe? Looks more like a sudden scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> Get done with your needlework, Swenson. Aye, aye, sir. Well? Well? I, I'm not a preacher. What do you do for a living? Why, well, I'm a gentleman. Huh? You don't say. Who feeds you? I have uh, an income, but if I may say Who so... Who earned your income, eh? You poor old dead, I'll bet. Let me see your hand. Ah, ah so so soft ah. as a woman. It's good for nothing but dishwashing and scullion work. I wish to be put ashore. I'll pay you for the delay. I've got a better proposition for the good of your soul, mine. Why don't you work your passage? My mate's gone and there'll be a lot of promotion. Cookie there is about to lose his cabin boy. You see this handsome lot here? These are my seal hunters. The lads will make all the money for us. We have to take good care of them, especially as some of them can't hardly manage it for themselves. Now, they're privileged to sup at the captain's table and I know they'd appreciate a bit of class around here. What say you take the cabin boy's place? Sign the articles for the cruise. Twenty dollars a month and all found. How about it? Be the making of you. I see a vessel there in the offing. She's very probably bound for San Francisco. Very probably. Cookie! Cookie! Yes, sir. Where's that boy? Tell him I want him. Yes, sir. He's here, sir. What's your name? George Leach, sir. How old are you? Just turned 16, sir. Belch! You'll never see 18 again. Big for your age at that. Muscles like a horse, though your belly's soft. Pick up your kit and go far into the forecastle. You're a boat puller now. You're promoted, see? Swenson! Sir? You know anything about navigation? No, sir. Well, never mind. You're a mate. Just the same. Get your traps aft into the mate's berth. Aye, aye, sir. What are you waiting for, Leech? I didn't sign for boat puller, sir. I signed for cabin boy. Pick up and go for it. I don't want no boat pulling. I bet you don't want my fist in your fat cut either, eh? Oh. <laughs> well, mister, how about you? Made up your mind? I'll give you a thousand dollars. Forget it. Are you going to take up your duties as cabin boy, or do I have to take you in hand? Well? Yes. Say yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's your name? Ken Waden, sir, sir. First name? Humphrey, sir. Humphrey Van Waden. That'll do. Go to the cook and learn your duties. Hold on, don't go yet. Svensson! Call all hands! All hands on deck! All hands on deck! Well, now that we've everything sorted, we'll have the funeral and get the decks cleared of useless lumber. You men there, lock the guts on yonder hedge cover! Look sharp to the lee side with it! That's the way! Rest it there! Wait for it! I only remember one part of the service, and the body shall be cast into the sea. So, cast it in. Lift up that and dirt, damn your sudden and slide away! What the hell's the matter with you?
Benson! Sir! We're in for a sou'easter. Reef the chip and main sir. Aye, aye, sir! Come on now, lads. Do you this? Let's get this cat. Come on! Right, come on, move yourself. Get them spuds in the pot. Well, I I'm sorry, Thomas. I, I don't oh, exactly... Oh, I'm sorry, Thomas. Bleeding hell. Who do you think you're talking to? Well, you well, can I stole that Thomas palaver. You're in my bleeding galley now and you'll show me some bleeding respect. It's Mr Mugridge or you'll get a kick up your tight little arse. Now look here, don't my... Don't you look here, me. But... Just do as you're told or else. But I have never peeled a potato. Oh, dearie me. Can I have a little tantrum, are we? Can I stamp your little shoe? Look sharp, you slob, and cut out the whinging. As soon as them spuds is peeled, I want you up to the cabin with a pot of tea and the rough weather trays. We're in for a howling sou'easter. Here she comes. Keep her steady, steady. You there, amidships. Cabin boy, you have... Look lively, hope! Grab hold of something! <laughs> Bleeding hell if you ain't a slob. I oh. even carry a bit of tea off without losing it. I saved the pot! An enormous wave just swept me off my feet! Uh. I think my knee is broken. Uh, sir, you bloody well right if your neck was broke. Well, you can bleed him well, hop along to the cabin and look sharp. It's my arse that'll be kicked if you're not there to wait on the captain's table. <coughs> I tell you, they can swim as soon as they're born. You're blowing the hot air out of your ass as you, uh, Latimer. Uh, uh, Mind what you're doing with that tea, boy? I I'm sorry, I... Tea here, boy. They can swim as soon as they're born. How come they're born on land? I'm huh? telling you, they can bloody swim before they can see. I tell you for why they're born on land. Because the mother has to teach them how to swim, that's why. Smoke, you tell this lunkhead, will you? Any so seals swim as soon as they're born. I don't know and I don't care. As long as there's enough of them swimming around for us. Jesus, I'll be glad when the storm's blown itself out. I get stir crazy batting down with this crew. Boy! Sir! More tea! Jump to it! Yeah. Pour it in the mug this time, not all over the table. More bread here, huh? Yes, yeah, sir. Don't you badmouth the storm, Smoke, if you know what's good for you. We'll just make the most of it. You'll see yeah. us how we've got much choice. Aye, right, well, it's driving us to the southwest at a good rate of knots. Am I to wait all day for more bread, huh? Move yourself, boy. Coming! Coming! How do you know every pup's born ashore? Eh? For Christ's sake, Latimer! Come on, come on, let's get your ass in here! Uh, uh, oh, you got your togs back, have you? Where is it, Mr. Muggeridge? You what? Mr. Muggeridge, I think you know what I'm talking about. In the pocket of my jacket was a wallet with $185 in gold and folding money. These few nickels and quarters are all that remain to me. I repeat, where is it? Now look here, um. Do you want your nose flattened, eh? Because you're going the right way about it, calling me a thief. No. Come here, you little bleeder. No. I'll teach you some respect. My God! Is everything on this ship reduced to brute violence? Come here! No! I, I won't! I won't descend to your level! You nippy little <laughs> beggar, aren't you, eh? Yeah. Here, cop this! <laughs> you idiot! You might have killed me! Look at him run! And with a game leg, too! Come on back, Mama's little darling! I won't hit you, I promise! Uh, you're no use to me later, are oh, yeah. you? Come here. I've got a special job for you. I don't say that I don't do you a good turn every now and then. Here's a nice soft job for you. Now, this is the old man's stateroom, and all you've got to do is square it up, make the bed in it. All right? Oh, what's the matter? My God. All these books. Uh, he's a bit of a reader on a quiet, the old man. But this is a veritable library. Shakespeare. Tennyson. De Quincey. Ho. Astronomy and physics, too. 
Mr. Darwin, I see. <laughs> and it seems that Wolf Larson nodded off last night in the company of Robert Browning. I can hardly credit it. Yeah, well, never mind loafing about. Move yourself and get the place shipshape. Benson? Aye, sir. Time to break out the top sills. Let's make our run. Aye, aye, Captain. Well, um, I see your leg hasn't dropped off yet. Did you pass a restful night? Since you ask. No, sir, I did not. Didn't you get a berth amidships in the hunter's cabin as I ordered? The hunters themselves call it the steerage, which is just about right. Well, Hump, I have some good news for you. Svensson there talks in his sleep to beat the band, so I've thrown him out of the mate's stateroom. You take it. Thank you. Perhaps you might do me another favor, sir. What is it? My clothes were left to dry in the galley. And <laughs> I... No, don't tell me. Pickings. Cookies, pickings. How can I get my money back again? Well, that's your lookout. A man who leaves his money lying around the way you did deserves to lose it. Besides... You've no right to put temptation in the way of your fellow creatures. You tempted Cookie, and he fell. You've placed his immortal soul in jeopardy. You do believe in the immortal soul, don't you? Come on, Hump. What's your philosophy? I'm interested. I believe in it's something. Life? After death? Immortality? Yes, in a sense. What sense? Come on, man. Well, I, I look in a man's eyes, however brutal that man might be, and I read immortality there. Well, supposing for the sake of argument you're right, to what end? If I'm immortal, why? What, what do you believe, then? I believe that life is a mess. It's like yeast, a ferment. The big eat the little, the strong eat the weak, the lucky eat the most, and move the longest. That's all. It's piggishness. And it's life. And what would be the point of an immortality of piggishness? Huh? Now will you look at that? That man there, pick up that line and make it fast. Yes, yes, you man. By the way, Hump, how much was it Cookie got away with? $185, sir. My God. Rich pickings. Harrison. Hi, mister. Take yourself aloft and shift over the foregaff topsail. Aye, aye, sir. Look sharp there, lad. Hold her steady, helmsman. Mr. Mate, sir! What do you want, Harrison? Just get on with the job! She's jammed in the block, mister! I can see that, Harrison! Oh, well, I know the parcels are rear. What's going on, Simpson? She's jammed at the end of the gap, sir. Lower the parcels, shall I, sir? Uh, to hell with that! Simpson, send that man there to the hell yard! But it, it's young Harrison! I don't care if it's the boy, Jesus! Aye, aye, sir! Harrison! Aye, sir! To the hell yard, sled! Get up to the gap and on the her! Go to it, lad! Ah, will you look at that? Harrison's still aloft. That's three hours by my watch. Uh, it's a damn shame, Louis. Harrison's just clinging on up there. The light is frozen with terror. Aye. He's thrown up his breakfast a half hour since, poor bastard. Well, it ain't right. The boy's willing enough. He'll learn if he's given a fair chance, but but, but this is... Shut your trap, Jono. The wolf's got big ears. I don't care, Owen. I'm not going to stand by and watch your boy murdered. Jono, the old man will let you go up there. What do you think you're doing, Jensen? The boy needs a hand. That's an edgy foot drop. Get down when I tell you. 
Don't be a fool to yourself, John O. You'll live longer taking in your lights and flying false signals. It's an order, mister! Aye, aye. Sir. Aye. Bring me more bread. <coughs> Here it is. Let me have that. That bread's mine, Anderson. Shut your mouth, Smoke. By God, I've had enough of you, you bastard! And I've had enough of the lot of you! Sit down, Smoke, before I knock you down! Now, I know you, Smoke, and I'm telling you to suck on that itchy trigger finger of yours, because if you take it into your thick skull to shoot Henderson, one of these dark nights, I will shoot you. You've had fair warning. Well, now. Um, there was a word you used the other day when we were talking philosophy. Altruism, wasn't it? Now, I heard of that. It means something about cooperation, doesn't it? Well, in a way, there has come to be a sort of a connection. But I think there are, there are other words you would understand better. Such as? Materialist, hedonist. For Christ's sake, boy, am I to get some tea tonight or what? Wait, you hurry, Smoke. Those are big words there, hump. What's a hedonist? You are. You're a man who lives only for self gratification. Ah, for your own pleasure. That's fair enough. You're a man utterly without what the world calls morals. That's it. A man uh, of whom to be always afraid. That's the way to put it. As one is afraid of a shark. Or a snake. Now you know me. But generally men call me Wolf. A better name would be Caliban. He was a deformed monster. Where the hell are you, um? There's a pot of mesh spuds to be carried. Fetch the spuds yourself, Cookie. I haven't finished with hemp yet. Come here, um. Who's Caliban when he's at home? I was thinking of Browning's poem. Browning? Good. I'm reading him, but making heavy weather. How does this poem go? Cookie, if hungry men at the table, you fetch those spots. Humpers otherwise engaged. Aye, sir. Sit down. Hump. The poem. Uh, well, Caliban is the deformed slave of a magician called Prospero. Ah, oh, are you there, Hump? No, he bleeding ain't here. Oh, hello there, Cookie. A ray of sunshine you are, as ever. What'd you expect? I'm doing two men's work since the old man got his hooks into hump. How do you mean? He's a guest at the captain's table now, ain't he? Has been for the last three days. Is he now? Bleeding Lord Muck sitting there with his gammy leg up on a stool, spouting on about poetry and God knows what. And the old man going at it too makes me bleeding sick. Well, I hope old hump keeps the weather eye open. Uh, you man, the wolf, you can never guess the way of him. Right, oh, enough. Here, what are you doing? Get your mitts out of condensed milk. Oh, just a taste, Cookie. Just a taste uh, of your sweet tooth. Get out of it, you thieving bastard! No. We covered this very point a day or so ago. The yeast all is squirming. We did, yes. But not to my satisfaction. Speaking of satisfaction, Cookie! Oh, yes, sir. Give me some more of that mess you call stew. Uh, very good, sir. Not very good, Cookie. We must eat it to live. <clears throat> Why must you? Huh? If life is nothing but a seething, filthy mess, rather like Mugridge's stew. Because the fittest must survive. Life is all about eating life till the strongest 
and most piggish life is left. You are damned smug, do you know that? It's something I've never been called before. You look around you, and you do not see. Or at least, you only see what you want to see. You're blind to the most important phenomenon. What's that? Yourself. Do you ever look in a mirror? No time for it. I leave that to gentlemen like you. Let me be your mirror for a moment. I prefer to get back to Mr. Darwin. Of course you do. He doesn't answer back. Don't push it, hum. You see, already the mirror irritates you. Why? I've told you I have no truck with such things. I'll tell you what the mirror sees, shall I? It sees a man feared and hated by everybody aboard this ship. That's the captain's lot. I'm the boss. Yes, you're the boss. But you're also on your own. You have power, but you do not have a single friend. The mirror sees a, a sad man. Wolf Larson. Steady, hum. A sad, lonely man. I said once you were like Caliban, but your plight is worse than that. No more now, hum. You're like Lucifer, banished to a society of the soulless. Your philosophizing is just so much verbiage, empty words. I see, hum, that it's you who plays too much store with words. You think your words are daggers, but they're not. Try your words against the grip of my hands now. Let me go. I can't. No, I won't let you go. You speak so easily about your belief in the immortal soul. But what do you do now with my hands around your throat, squeezing the life out of you? Do you relax and let go? Happy to go on your immortal way? No, indeed you don't. The yeast squirms on. You fight and claw for life. You cling on as young Harrison did up there on the hell yards. And your chest is lily livered. Go back to your woman's duties. That's all you're fit for. Cookie! <laughs> oh, that was... Is he taken with a fit? Uh, Mr. Van Waden finds himself unable to discourse further today. Take him back to the galley. He should be all right in half an hour or so. Aye, aye, sir. I'll look after him, sir. Right, another sack of rice while you're at it. Come on, look sharp. You have two sacks already. You're sitting on the other. Well, so I am, so I am. Where would I be without them observant peepers of yours, eh? Right, sugar, two bags, pronto. Uh, 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 bleeding cold down there, eh? Bit like a nice comfy coffin, really. Come on, out you get. Let's get this lot stowed away. And when you've done that, get them pans scrubbed from dinner. Since when did you bother to wash vegetable pans? Since now, unless you're your lip. Else I'll button it for you. Come here, you little beggar, and I'll give you another bruise to match them you've got already. Let me go. Ow! Oh, bleeding hell, you need to fit my bleeding thumb off. You're turning into a little wild animal, you are. Yes, I'm reduced to your level. Right, if that's how you want it... How about this then, eh? That's your bit of this, do you, hun? Don't try and run for it, you little bleeder, or I'll cut you straight, I will. Just keep still, or maybe I'll be happy with just slicing off the end of your ear, eh? Fair cop, eh? Bit of your ear for my chewed thumb. I want a good keen edge on this little beauty, see? Now, what was you saying about them vegetable pants? That's better. Now yeah, we're getting somewhere. Will that be all, sir? Uh, set out a box of cigars, McRitch, and then take yourself off. Aye, aye, sir. Unless, uh, hump, you require anything further? 
Thank you, no. Cigar, sir. Mm. Set him down and leave us. You. You, you sluggish hump. What's the matter? You make my life more of a hell than it has to be by this favoritism. Why? Hmm? Mugridge will take it out on me when you return me to the galley. He lords it over me with a knife now, goading me, just waiting for his chance to use it. You're afraid, eh? Yes, I admit it, I'm afraid. And yet, if your philosophy had any substance, surely you should be glad. Surely you should embrace Cookie and his knife, who can only give you a boost to eternal life. You make fun of me. But I tell you, I have had such thoughts. Of suicide, you mean? Yes. But it needn't come to that if you don't wish to be boosted just yet. Why not boost Cookie? According to your ideas, he too must be an immortal millionaire. You cannot bankrupt him, then boost him. Why don't you do it, and I'll promote you to his place. And he's getting $45 a month. Jesus, here am I supposed to be on watch and I didn't even know you was there. How goes it, Hump? Huh? I have a little business proposal for you, Louis. Oh? The dirk that you have down the side of your boot there, what's it worth to you? Would you part with it for a couple of quarts of condensed milk? Well, now, I might. I might. Meet me when you come off watch, by the hatch to the lazarette store. Hey, you mean business, eh? I mean to sleep easy in my bunk. Yeah. And what does his worship do but give me two years in Reading? Sent you dying, eh? I didn't care, though, Smoke. You should have sent that geezer off fixed. Cut him up till he screamed. Demon with a blade, I am. Mind your back, mister. I didn't mean it, Tommy. This geezer was saying sniffing yeah. he was. Cut him to ribbons, I did. Oh, why don't you come up with a fresh story? That one's like you're cooking. Overdone. You what? You heard me. Mr. Smoke, might I ask a favor? What do you want? Behind your shoulder there, in that box, is a whetstone. Hand it to me, will you? Where would you get a bleeding whetstone? And what good is it to you? Why, to put a keen edge on my dirk, mister. And where'd you get that? There you are, Holmes. Thanks, Mr. Smoke. Not a bad weapon, eh, Smoke? Well, you'll have to go somewhere to get it as slick as this beauty. That is precisely my intention, mister. By God, a showdown? The lads are going to enjoy this. Ahoy there, you guys! Get an eyeful of this! What's the blather for, Smoke? Hump's called out, Cookie. Plays at ten paces. Go Give on, Give it Hump. to him. Watch him, Hump. He's a sly bastard. Yeah. Pay attention to the blade, yeah. Hump. Try it. Don't look him in the eye. Just leave a piece <laughs> of me, Hump. I want my slice. <laughs> Ah, uh, what's the good of making a holy show of ourselves for them gulping mugs? They'd be bloody well glad to see us cut one another's throats. Eh, hey, you're not half bad, hump. You've got spunk, as you Yanks say. And I like you, in a way. So, come on, and shake. Not my time. I'll not touch you. And be advised, you'll not touch me from now on. <laughs> You tell him, Hump. Who runs the galley now, Cookie? Hump, I'd say. Hey, hey, You must pull in your horns, Mr. Mugridge. Oh, you think so, do you? Well, you haven't heard the last of me, Mr. High and bloody mighty Yonson. In the meantime, how'd you like this kettle of hot water around your chops, eh? And the rest of you bleeding swabs, get out of my galley doors! <laughs> Uh, 
Louis. Ah, yeah, hump. Brought you a drink. Plenty of sugar. Oh, thanks. Yeah, though it's the skipper yonder who's in need of something. Oh. Oh, he's seen you. Hump, oh, moment of your time. Aye, aye, Captain. I hear I was right. Hump, you're beginning to stand on your own legs. I'm surviving, yes, sir. Hump, tell me, do you know if Cookie has anything for head pains in his medicine box? I don't know, but I'll look if you wish. Yes, do that, Hump, and be quick about it. I'll go and see what I can find. Thank you, Hump. Fetch it to my quarters. Aye, aye, sir. in my life, Hump. <gasps> uh, I, I have a fearsome needling ache behind my eyes just now, and it's getting to me some. Ah. George, pull the leather tight, uh, like so. It looks so easy when you do it, Jano. <laughs> it's practice, that's all. What are you doing in my boat, Johnson? Don't fret, Henderson. Shut up. Out of this boat, Johnson. My name is Johnson, mister, with what? a J. What's the trouble here? No trouble, Smoke. Well, what's the idea of ordering my boat puller around, Anderson? If he's your boat puller, keep him in your boat. All right, all right, Captain. Let's warn you guys about this feuding. Yeah, well, the captain ain't here now, Svensson. In fact, we ain't seen the captain for days. So come on, Svensson. What are you going to do about it? Come on, you guys. No, you come on, Mr. Mint. One step more smoke and I'll hang you by your ankles from the cross trees. Now, oh, yeah, listen to me. I'm not an unreasonable man. Smoke, you want Henderson's scalp on your belt. I can understand that. And Henderson, you'd like to blow smoke away. I understand that even more, believe me. What I'm telling you is that you have to wait. Here's what I suggest. Hold your hands until the seal hunting's over, and I promise you a royal carnival. All grudges settled and them that survive can arrange any story they like about how the others were lost at sea. Strike your fair smoke. Nothing to say, huh? How about you, Anderson? Well, well. All tongue-tied. Suits me. I like a quiet ship. And uh, this fella, Yarick, he was the jester and eh? like the joker in the pack. Yes, that's right. His is the skull that Hamlet picks up from the grave. Mm, yeah, I like that. That's a good touch. Come in, Swenson. I brought Johnson, Captain. Good. Hump, shut the doors and draw the slide. Now then, Johnson. My name is Johnson, sir. Well, Johnson, then damn you. Can you guess why I've sent for you? I know you have it in for me. You do not like me. Johnson, to get to the point, I understand you're not quite satisfied with the dry goods on sale. Some complain about oil skins, I hear. And who do you hear this from? The cook. 
I suppose. <laughs> Muckridge may not know much about cooking, but he does know <laughs> which side his bread's buttered. But never mind that. Is it true you don't like the oil skins? They are no good, sir. Look at him, Hump. Look at this bit of animated dust. What do you think of him? I, I think he is a good man. Good man, huh? Do you know what I'm gonna do, Hump? No. Well, I'm gonna show you how fares the good man. Watch me. Easy, Benson! Easy! Easy, she goes, I say! I say! Easy! Or do I have to beat some sense into you, too? Now then, Hump, jerk open the doors there. Let's heat this mess out of here. Have you killed him? No, never fear. It's not, alas, poor Jansen just yet. Oh, my Christ. What comes here? Uh, this'll do. Dump him here, Svensson. My God. Look what they've done to Jono. God damn your soul for this Larson. Steady, George. No, no, let the boy speak. What's on your mind, leech? Hell's too good for you, you coward. You murderer, you pig. Pig! Pig! Why don't you kill me, you murderer? You can do it. I ain't afraid. There's nobody to stop you. Damn sight better dead and out of your reach than alive and in your clutches. Come on, you coward! Kill me! Kill me! Kill me! By God, look at him! The cause of all this and still smirking. What are you talking about, boy? I may be a boy, but I know better than to carry tales after the skipper. Hey! You miserable piece of crap! Oh, oh no! No, oh, get him off me! There. That ought to hold it. Try putting some weight on it. Yeah, that's great, Hump. You make a good ship's doctor. Well, I have my work cut out. What with poor Jono and Mugridge, of course. Tough old goat. First time ever sprained an ankle kicking somebody's butt. How's Jono coming along? He's not in good shape, I'm afraid. I've done what I can for him. That bastard Larson will pay for that. Come on, Leech. You're wanted on deck. Look sharp. All right, all right. God, and you'll pay too, you slap-footed Swede. I'll do for you. Soon. Soon. Thanks, Hump. Keep your powder dry now. Fine night, boy. Now, what are you doing on deck? You should be tucked up on your bunk. This is too stuffy below. Aye. Right. And it'll get a mite warmer before this night's through. Make yourself scarce, Tom, if you know what's good for you. What are you talking about? Oh, too late. Look yonder. Oh my God. It's someone climbing aboard. Aye. It is. God damn him. It's all right, Hemp. Only me. Not a night for swimming, eh? Where's the mate? Um, I, I haven't seen him. Strensen? Benson? Where is he, Helmsman? I don't know, sir. Saw him go for it a little while ago. So did I go for it. But you observe, he didn't come back the way I went. So, what do you make of that, Helmsman? You must have been overboard, sir. You've been cut on the head. Shall I bind it for you? No, there's no time for that now. Sh sh shall I look for Svensson below? No, I'm... <laughs> You won't find him. He wasn't as strong a swimmer as me. But we'll go below right enough. Come on. I wager there are some light sleepers in the forecastle. And hitch that lamp and bring it with you. I've done for the boat. 
both of them, I tell you. How do you mean? The captain and the mate are over the side. You ditched Wolf Larson. And Svensson, too? With my own hands. The ghost is ours for the taking. Wait a minute, George. Shush. What's up, John? I thought I heard something. Go to the companion vein, take a look. All right. What do you think, Kelly? I don't know, son. This is hanging business. Well, your ears aren't crippled at least. There's someone coming who looks for all the world like the wolf himself. Jesus. Oh. Ditched him, did you? I don't understand it. I brained him with my own hands. Into your berth, quick now. Everybody just sleeps, okay? Okay. Keep the bed steady up. I can't help it. My arm is trembling now. And tread carefully. Let's take a look at these sleeping beauties. Ah, look at that home. <laughs> Young Master Leech. Serene as a baby, it looks like. Ah, and here's Mr. Johnson below him. Hold the lamp here while I feel his pulse. His sleeping pulse is slow and regular, you know. <coughs> Good evening, Miss Tilly. We have a last get a knife for knife. Someone strike me. Hold him on the head. Hold him on the head. Hold him, hold him. What's the ruckus? Below there. Get up. You give me that lamp there. I'm going down. He's there. My hand. Small. Give me your hand. Oh, that's you, Captain. God! Give me your hand then! I'm much obliged to you, Smoke. I remember you for this. Where's Hump? It's only me and Louis here, Captain. Well, well. Hump must be still below with those enemies. My thumb out. Strike a match. Let's find a lamb. How did he get a face? Because he's a devil and not one of you to get me a knife. How was we supposed to see in the dark? If the dark doesn't save us, he won't know who was who. He'll know soon enough when he claps eyes on you us. You make me tired with your yapping. If you talk with your fist, he'd have been done with by now. Why couldn't one of you, just one of you, get me a knife when I sung out? You make me sick. You know damn well he can't kill. You can't yeah. afford to. Well, maybe he won't do for us, but he'll be an ice box on this ship from now on. Hump! Oh. You turn there, boy. Yeah, man wants you. He ain't down here. Yes, he is. Oh, well, hey. look who's been skulking there under the ladder all this time. I'm coming up, Smoke. Oh, no, you ain't. Oh, that yeah. damn little sneak uh, will shut your mouth. Let him go. Oh, your life. He was hiding down there all the time. I said let him go, mister. I've seen and heard nothing. Believe me. I He's all right, I tell you. You don't like the old man any more than we do. Ain't that so, Hump? I've given my word. Yeah. <laughs> On your way, Hump. Put your head this way for me. Uh, I'm afraid this stuff stings. I. It does that. Hold up your arm, please. Aye, aye, duck. God made you a good body, you know. Did he? I've often thought so myself. And wondered why. Purpose. Utility. This body was made for use. To grip and tear and destroy living things that stand between me and life. Utility is not beautiful. Life isn't, you mean? I'm going to have to put some stitches in those cuts. All right. Go ahead. Some sailor sunk his teeth in my leg and wouldn't let go. I dragged him almost to the top of the foxhole ladder. Like I said, Hump, you've turned into a mighty handyman, and I'm short of a mate again, as you know. From now on, you will stand watches, receive $75 a month, and be addressed fore and aft as Mr. Van Waden. But I... I don't understand the first thing about navigation. 
Not necessary at all. I, I really do not care to sit in high places. Why, it befits a gentleman like yourself. I have no experience. I will, I will not be mate on this hell ship. <laughs> In The Sea Wolf by Jack London, Wolf Larsen was played by Jack Claff, Humphrey Van Weyden by Kerry Shale, and Thomas Mugridge by Ian Jury. Charlie Ferruseth was played by David Bannerman, The Ferry Passenger by William Roberts, Johnson by Geoffrey Gear, Svensson by Brett Usher, Leach by Scott Farrell, Louis by Nigel Anthony, and Smoke by Anthony Jackson. Other parts were played by Richard Pierce, Andrew Wincott, Terence Edmund, Norman Jones, Peter Penry Jones, and Clarence Smith. The Sea Wolf is adapted for radio in four parts by Ed Thomason. Original music was composed and played by Elizabeth Parker of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The Sea Wolf is directed by Adrian Bean. And now, uh, how long in your expert opinion, Mr. Mate, before we sight the coast of Japan? You'd best address yourself to the skipper, Mr. Smoke. Aye, aye, right, Smoke. Don't rush hold on there. He's learning his ropes and rigging this week. Yeah, Horn is right. I'm paying due to graduate to navigation for a day or two yet. Hmm. Ain't that so, huh? I'm tired of your chokes, Henderson. Well, ain't no joke, Captain. I asked a simple question and hoped their loom seemed capable of a simple answer. I'll get you to the seal, herd smoke, never fear. In the meantime, you'll get off the mate's back or answer to me. Mr. Van Weyden? Sir. As I see you finished your supper, will you kindly put a butt on the port tech? Aye, aye, sir. The Sea Wolf by Jack London. Starring Jack Claff as Wolf Larsen, Kerry Shale as Humphrey Van Weyden, and Shelley Thompson as Maud Brewster. Episode 2. Van Weyden, sir. Step up to the poop deck, will you? Aye, aye, sir. Louis, I'm to put about on the port tack. <laughs> All right, hum. Yes, that makes sense. I'm glad it does to you. Now, will you kindly convey that sense to me in layman's language? And please be quick. If I know Larson, he'll be on deck any minute to see I've carried out the order. Uh, no problem, Hump. Oh, you must have young Harrison there brace the yards. Brace the yards, yes. Yeah. Now have the helmsman drop a few spokes so she's into the wind. How long to Wainwright Island, Skipper? Day and a half, maybe two. What's the Wainwright Island? Fresh water. Mr. Van Weyden? Aye, sir. Smoke here has just reminded me that the crew need to be briefed about procedures for picking up fresh water. All hands on deck in ten minutes. Aye, sir. Now listen to me, Smoke. What's on your mind? I intend to keep the men waiting on deck a while. Long enough for you guys to go through the forecastle and ferret out whatever weapons have been stowed out of sight. Not just knives and pistols. Keep an eye out for black checks and brass knuckles. I want it all, understand? I give you 15 minutes. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Van Weyden? Procedures for the stopover at Wainwright, Harrison. 
Well, it takes six men to pick up water. If I call us all on deck. Yeah, the wolf's up to something. What's Wainwright like, Louis? It's a good fertile island. Some Japanese settlers. Oh, yeah? Ha <laughs> Georgie, I know what you're thinking. What do you say, Jono? Sounds like a good spot. Georgie, grow up, huh? Look what happened last time. Yeah, last time I was dumb enough to count on the other guys. What do you say, Jono? Just you and me, huh? I bet that. Here's the skipper. All right now, lads. All hands present, Captain. Thank you, Mr. Van Weyden. Right. We're maybe a day out of Wainwright Island, where we'll be taking out fresh water. There'll be a detail of six men. Two of you on the beach to fill up the casks, two men to ferry them, and two of you to haul them aboard. That's it, Jono. We make sure we get to do the ferry. Now, we'll be laying about a half a mile from the beach off of a cove known as the chimney, so-called because it's a narrow gorge. It is sheer volcanic rock that no human being could ever hope to climb. I told you she wouldn't make it easy. I didn't say nothing about climbing, Louis. Mr. Van Weyden? Sir! I want you to pick four men for the ferry detail and for taking the casks aboard. How about that? Maybe Hump will run for it, too. And aboard the ghost, Mr. Van Weyden, is where you'll remain throughout. Aye, aye, sir. So what did I tell you? The old wolf knows what he's about. I'll go ashore with the beach detail. That'll be you, Johnson, and you, Leech. Jesus. Speak up, Leech. Two of us and one of you, eh, sir? A steady, Leech, lad. Right, Leech. Think you can manage, boy? Anytime you're ready, Captain. Now, did I mention it's a sandy beach? Not a blunt instrument in sight. I don't need no instrument, sir. You don't, eh? Unlike your mates in the forecastle. Ah, smoke. I see you have a tidy hole of weaponry there. Now we know why he called us all on deck. All right, Captain. A job lot, knives and cautious and brass knuckles. Over the side with him, mister. Hey, hey. Feel better, do you, Wolf Larson? Like I said, some of us don't need nothing but bare hands. Leech, my boy. You are beginning to irritate me. You're like a pesky buck in my ear, and what I do with bucks is sweat them pots. Oh, mess off my deck. Mr. Van Weyden. Sir. The weather's set fair. Let's have these decks swilt and scrubbed. Aye, aye, sir. You men, Harrison, Kelly, Owen, break out marks and buckets. That you, Mr. Van Weeden? Yes. A moment of your time, mister. It's late. I need to turn in. I have a job for you first. How's the patient, by the way? Young Leech. Uh, have you seen him today? Yes, he's on the mend. A tough lad. He's not been out of his bunk for 24 hours. I trust he'll be fit for the Wainwright excursion at daybreak. Another night's rest and he'll be okay. Another night's rest, eh? Good. Good. Why do you toy with him like this? Why not just kill him and put him out of his misery? Not a very charitable attitude, huh? Oh, spare me your sarcasm. Uh, um, um, you just don't get it, do you? Get what? The thrill of life, man. Right now, young Leech is living like he's never lived before. He's living more royally than any man for it if he did but know it. I confess I do not get it. The boy has become an animal. Why, he actually snarls. I've just learned that he got his hands on one of Smoke's shotguns a couple of days ago, and it was all the three of the hunters could do to take it from him. He was on his way aft to blow your head off. There you are, Hump. The lad's living deep and high. He's staking his all. Man is a natural gambler, and a man's life is the biggest stake he can lay. The greater the odds, the greater the thrill. I honestly envy young Leech when I see him raging at the summit of his Passion. Don't give me that. If all this senseless violence is a matter of gambling, then the dice are loaded, and you know it. It's a coward's game you're playing. Of the two of us, you and I, who is the greater coward? You say you find this situation bad. It offends your moral sense. Why go along with it then? I've no choice. I'm a prisoner. Of course you have a choice. You could throw in your hand with Leech and 
Johnson, but you won't do that because you're scared. You want to live, and your need to live is so strong that you're quite willing to compromise those fine principles of yours. At least I'm true to myself. Um, Will that be all? It's not many hours to daybreak. Uh, one job before you turn in, Mr. Wayne Wade, and I noticed just now some gear not stowed away, a scrubbing brush. A scrubbing brush? I left on the steps to the poop. The boy, Harrison, is responsible. Have him out of his bunk to put it away properly. You want me to wake the whole forecastle in the middle of the night so that Harrison can be made to tidy away a scrubbing brush? No, mister, I don't want you to rouse them. You just wake up the watch below and tell them to do it. Don't stand there gobbing, man. The sooner it's done, the sooner you can get some sleep. I won't have a sloppy ship, and these men must be made to believe it. Fine morning, Louis. Aye. Good day for a boat trip. <laughs> All right, you there, uh, Kelly, isn't it? Aye, Mr. Van Weyden, sir. You and Harrison prepare boat number two. Load up the empty cast. Aye, sir. Does that make us the ferry detail, sir? Yes, it does, Harrison. Think you can handle it. Aye, aye, sir. Kelly, come on, let's look sharp. Leach. Aye, sir. The captain's still below. Let me look at those stitches while we're waiting. Aye, sir. Just step uh, out of the sunlight. Listen, George. If you have a plan, for God's sake, bring me in on it, too. I, I can't stand idly by any longer. I think you're square, Mr. Van Waden. But stay where you are and keep your mouth shut. Say nothing but saw wood. Look, Jono's tipping us the wink. Larson's coming on deck. Remember what I said now. Hi. Smoke. Hi, hey, sir. Anderson. <clears throat> Looks like we're in for a clear day. Be a fine afternoon for a turn around the deck after your grub. Aye. You bet, Skipper. How goes it, Mr. Van Weyden? All hands standing by, sir. All right. Lorway Johnson. Give us an hour, Mr. Van Weyden, before you send Harrison and Kelly for the first pickup. Aye, aye, sir. All right, lads. Let's have them casts aboard. Well done, Harrison. You're making good time. You bet, sir. Have you counted the barrels, Louis? Aye, sir. One more trip after this one and we'll be done. Uh -huh. Good. Well, it's been a quiet day after all. Uh, up to now, sir. What do you mean, Louis? Ah, nothing, sir. Exceeding quiet, to be sure. Now, why don't you go below and ask Cookie for a mash of tea? Ahoy! Mr. Van Witten? What is it, Smoke? Take a look at the boat, will you? Seems to me young Harrison's lost his sense of direction. Henderson! Run below and fetch the Winchesters. Yeah, it's a good clear day. Some shooting practice. My God, Louie, look. Harrison and Kelly are making a run for it. If they round that promontory, they'll be away. Aye, but they'll have to outrun rifle bullets to do it. The wolf thinks of everything. Louie, what should I do? There's not much you can do, unless you believe in praying. There you go, Smoke. Right. Mr. Smoke, I'm in command while the captain's ashore. Oh, yeah. You might be in command of the sailors, but I ain't a sailor. But it is my sailors you are intending to shoot. Oh, they're your sailors now. Come on, Henderson. Put a couple of shots in the water beside him. Right. Let him know we've seen him. More fun that way. Sure thing. Yeah. Hey, give us a spyglass there, Hump. Ah, uh, yes, I thought so. What is it, Louis? Uh, the skipper's put his boat in the water with Jono and Leach, and he's let out after them. Now, watch me take Kelly's right oar. <laughs> Jesus. What? Kelly doesn't know what's hit him. The oar blade is shot to splinters. Here's the same for Harrison. You! Will you look at that? Go on right, Smoke. That's enough. They're adrift now. Not for long. The wolf's sure bearing down on them. What's he up to, Louis? Well, he's thrown them a line. He's going to tow them in. All right, you men there! Stand by to haul those boats aboard! What do you think he'll do to Harrison and Kelly, Louis? I don't think, mister. Make fast there, lads! Ah, uh, that'll do it! On! Aye, mister. Stow the water casks. Aye, aye. Good work, mister. And we didn't carry on. Captain, one moment, sir. What is it? I'm 
starving. Want my chow. What about Harrison and Kelly? Who? The men you towed in. Ah, yes. Death beats both. What of them? What of them? What's going to happen? Nothing, as far as I'm concerned. Nothing? That's what I said, mister. Now, haven't you got work to do? Aye, aye, sir. Keep her steady, lad. Drop a spoke to starboard. Aye, sir. For God's sake, Harrison, stand up straight. How can you steer just leaning against the helm? Aye, sir. What is the matter with you, boy? Do you want the old man to punish you, is that it? He could have flayed you for trying to run for it like that the other day. Consider yourself lucky he hasn't laid a finger on you. It would have been better if he'd killed me, sir. All right, Harrison. All right, that's enough of such talk. Just steer a steady course. Aye, sir. Is that you, Louis? It is, sir. Shouldn't you be in your bunk? It's your turn for the red-eye watch. Uh, you too, I'm thinking. You look as though you've had no sleep for days. Aye. Well, the truth is, Louis, I haven't. But Larson is down with one of his attacks. He's been shut up in his berth since the night we left Wainwright Island. Yes, well, I hope his head splits, so I do. But you know, Hump, even laid up in his cabin, the wolf has a spell on this old ship. Smoke and Henderson are lauding it like they was his police. Never without their carbines. I know. He's making the whole crew pay for the beating he took in the forecastle. Harrison there is like a zombie at the helm. Aye. John O's the same. I'm looking for him now. He's black enough to go over the side if we don't watch him. Evening, Mr. Van Waden. Hello there, Leach. It's all right, Louis. I spotted John O. Ah, uh, where is he? He stretched out full length of the forecastle head. Just looking down at the drink. Oh, my God. I'll go to him. Don't fret, mister. If he was about to take a dive, he'd have gone by now. Aye. He's not even the will to do that. Nevertheless, I'd better talk to him. But he won't talk back, sir. Johnson? Johnson? You're wasting your breath, Mr. Van Waden. He don't talk to nobody. Mr. Johnson? This is the mate talking to you. Just leave me alone, mister. He don't mean no disrespect to you, Mr. Van Waden. It's all right, Leach. Stand away, will you? Johnson. I don't know what you might be contemplating, but just listen up now. There's a lot of things wrong with this damned ship, Jono, but you're not one of them. You're just about the best sailor aboard. Do you hear me? Any day now, we're going to reach the seal herds, and we'll be working all the hours that God sends. Just get through that, Jono. Just get through. Once Larson is sure of his catch, things will be different. You have my word. Well. Good night, mister. Mr. Van Waden. Yes, Leach. I want to ask a favor, sir. If it's your luck to ever make Frisco again, will you hunt up Matt McCarthy? He's my old man. He lives on the hill back of the Mayfair Bakery. Runs a cobbler shop everyone knows, and you'll have no trouble. Tell him I live to be sorry for the trouble I caused him and the things I've done, and just tell him God bless him for me. We'll all win back to San Francisco, Leach. And you'll be with me when I go see Matt McCarthy. I'd like to believe you, but I can't. Wolf Larson will do for me, I know it. All I can hope is he'll do it quick. Good night now. <sighs> well, Humphrey Van Waden. Better admit it to yourself. The wolf's all but done for you, too. <laughs> it is a cheap and sordid squirming after all this life. And the sooner over, the better. Over and done. That's 
Japan, Mr. Van Weeden. Aye, sir. Smoke! Aye, skipper. Make ready your boats. You'll be hunting before noon. Aye, aye. All right, move your foot. Mr. Van Weeden, my cabin in ten minutes. Aye, aye, sir. Cookie. Aye, Captain. Whiskey and glasses look sharp. Coming up, stop. Well, hum, you've managed so far, but now the real work begins. There you are, sir. Take a shot of whiskey back to the galley with you, Cookie. I'll be wanting you on deck soon. Aye, aye, sir, and, uh, and thank you, sir. Is it wise to ply Mugridge with drink? Don't worry about Cookie, hump. He knows what's coming. Which is more than can be said of you. True enough. Once we're among the herds, all hands will be away in the boats. But that leaves just me, you, and Cookie to sail the ship. I see. Have a drink. Thank you. The six boats will spread out fanwise. By the time the first weather boat and the last lee boat have taken up their positions, they're anything between 10 and 20 miles away. They cruise a straight course till sundown or till weather drives them in. Our job is to keep well to leeward of the last lee boat so that all of them have a fair wind to make a run back to us in case of squalls. You got the idea? Yes, I... I think so. No time to think. Hump, you better be damned sure. Now, when we pick up the boats, it'll be your job to tally the pelts. You oversee the skinning and afterwards the cleaning of the decks. And I hope you've a strong stomach because the scuppers will run red. A good day's killing and the decks will be slippery with fat and blood. The carcasses, they go over the side to the sharks. All I'm interested in is the skins. It's been spotty, Captain. Right, let's have you on deck, Cookie. Drink up, Mr. Van Weeden. We'll start you off easy at the helm. Let's go now. Drop a spoke to starboard, Mr. Van Weeden. Aye, aye, sir. Cookie, haul in there. Haul, man. Oh, that's it. That's it. Here she comes. Yes. Hold her, Mr. Van Weeden. Hold her. Hold her. Good. Good. That's great. No. She runs, Mr. Van Weyden! Good! Well, Hump, this is living, eh? <laughs> Hold those seals aboard, lads. Mind your backs there, you men. Come on, Kelly, get the knife moving. In we go. Addison! Have you seen the mate? Seen him only a minute ago after the galley. All right, I'll find him. <laughs> Mr. Van Waden? <laughs> Is that you, sir? <coughs> oh, never mind, Hum. All this blood and mess can take you that way at first. Oh. No, I'm fine now, Louis. Just a shock to the system, that's all. All right. Well, best get back to work. Yes, I'm. I'm fine, fine. <laughs> Let's have these carcasses away. We need more space to work here. Aye, aye, sir. Harrison! A hand here! Now, get a grip, lad. You'll have the guts sliding down the companionway. And Cookie will serve them up for supper if you're not careful. Over with them! Very good, lad. Now, go below. We need another drum of salt here. Look sharp! Aye, Mr. Van Weyden. Well, all for the sake of women's vanity, eh, Mr. Van Weyden? Get aloft with your spyglass, Mr. Van Weyden. Aye, aye. Up to the cross trees and tell me what you see. Cookie, how's the grub coming along? Ready when you all skip up. Good. If Mr. Van Weyden sees all fair, we'll stand down to eat. Come on, have... Let's see you swing on those red lines, sir. All right, men, stand down for the night. Harrison, stow the buckets and the rest of the gear. Aye, sir. Well, 
The wolf will turn you into an officer yet. <laughs> Hello there, Louis. <sighs> I confess I've never felt better. Why, today I was atop the masthead, keeping an eye out for you men. If anybody had told me three months ago that I'd be taking pleasure from such dizzy exploits, I'd have laughed in his face. The work is good for the men too, Louis. It keeps their mind from other things. Aye, it is true enough. Well, come the morning, we'll need our wits about us. How do you mean, Louis? Uh, just the old bones, Hump, just the old bones. More reliable than the barometer, I can tell you. Heavy weather, is it? More than likely, Hump. Good idea to break out your oilskins. What do you see, mister? Just lost the last boat over the horizon, sir. The wind seems to have breathed its last. It's so calm up here. I, I can still hear the guns. They're going at it, sir. All right. Come down, Mr. Van Weyden. <coughs> the boats are pulling away from us with this calm. I, I don't like it, Tom. Why? Uh, look at the sky yonder. What? I see what you mean. If she comes hard and snappy out of the east, it'll put us to windward of the boats. Aye. And if that happens, it's likely there'll be empty bunks in steerage and forecastle tonight. I hate this clammy heat. Old timers in Frisco call it earthquake weather. Look at me. If I sweat much more, I'm gonna bleed him melt away. I've never seen a sea like it. Nothing moving. <laughs> a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Gold. We're in for a right bleeding squall. No squall, cookie. Old Mother Nature's gonna get up on her hind legs and howl for all that's in her, and it'll keep us chumming to pull through with half our boats. Mr. Van Weyden, you better run up and loosen the topsails. But if it's going to howl, and effectively there's only the two of us to... Oh, so very much. Why, we've got to make the best of the first of it and run down to our boats before our canvas is ripped out of us. After that, I don't give a rap what happens. The stick will stand it, and you and me'll have to, although we plenty cut out for us. Cookie, by the time you've finished pots and pans, you'll be wanted on deck. Stand ready for a call. Aye, aye, Captain. I see you smiling, huh? What's tickling you? Creeping hysteria. It's just that I, I've been watching you with your head raised to the sky. And for some reason, I, I keep thinking of one of those pygmies in the Arabian Nights, standing before some malignant genie. Ah. You feel that, Hump? Yes. Cookie, are you awake? Yes, Skipper. Right. Move your butt. Let go of that four-boom tackle and pass it across. When she's willing, let go of the sheet and come in snug with the tackle. And if you make a mess of it, it'll be the last you ever make. Understand? Aye, sir. Mr. Van Waden, stand by to pass the headsails over, then jump for the topsails and spread them quick as God'll let you. The quicker you do it, the easier you'll find it. As for Cookie, if he ain't lively, bat him between the eyes. Now, we'll have the breeze on our quarter. By the last sound of the guns, the boats were bearing away slightly to the south. Thank God she ain't coming all of a bunch, Mr. Van Waden. Amen to that, Cookie. Ah! Ah, here it comes! Wait for it! Wait! Yeah, she goes! On the board! Mr. Van Weyden! Sir! Take a run aloft with the glasses and raise some of the boats! It doesn't seem possible those small boats could stay afloat in there! You'd better believe it! Will we catch them, sir? We've made at least 10 knots, and we're going 12 or 13 now. The old girl knows how to walk. Aye, aye, sir. Well, Mr. Ed Quinnan, see anything? Aye, sir. Boat, a couple of points off our port. Expect all hell to break loose! 
But don't mind it! Yours is to do your own work and have cookies stand by the machine! Come along, Mr. <coughs> Van Raden. You earned your hot coffee and hot tech. Uh, I'm afraid I can't hold a hot mug. My finger ends are split. Give it to me. I'll hold it for you, mister. Oh, I'm indebted to you once again, Mr. Johnson. Hold it, Jesus! Hold on to something, lads. Now she takes it. Ah! Oh. <coughs> oh, to hell with the lookout tonight. Uh, There's nothing can be done on deck. Uh, if anything's going to run us down, we couldn't get out of its way. Turn in, all hands. Get yourself some sleep. Henderson and Smoke better sleep in the cabin, sir. I wouldn't advise opening the slide to the steerage companionway. Uh, you're right, Mr. Van Weyden. Bed down as best you can, uh, men. What about me? I've run you up coffee and tack. Nobody gives a bleeding thought to me. Me insides is uh, it's something horrible. I swear I've broke a rib. You know anything about broken ribs, Mr. Van Weyden? Not a thing, sir. Nor me neither. Uh, You're gonna have to wait, Cookie. Uh, Tell Mr. Van Weyden's read up his medical book. Now, bed yourself down. Two of the boats are going to need a good deal of repair work. Yes. 
I can scarcely believe we've lost half our boats just like that. Not lost yet, Hump. They may have been picked up by other schooners. If so, we'll get them back eventually. Young Harrison is lost, though. And I would have been lost with him, but for Johnson grabbing hold of me. I don't think it's worth it. A broken boat for a young lad's life. But Harrison didn't amount to much. Good night. How goes it, Johnson? See for yourself, mister. I can do a proper job and replace these timbers, but I reckon the skipper won't want me taking the time. <laughs> He'll want them patched up quick to get among the herds again. That'd be false economy, Johnson. Give it your best shot, mister. I'll square it with the captain. Aye, aye, sir. Louis, what do you say? No sign of our boats, mister. Schooner in the offing, though. Two spokes to port. Looks like the Cisco. Very good. We'll rendezvous. Come in, Hump. Good news. We've got back two of our boats from the Cisco. No sign of Latimer's boat, though. I reckon after five days there's no hope now, but that means we've lost a total of only four men. I thought you might be glad of that. What do you think of this, Hump? What is it? It's a navigation aid of my own design. This little beauty, a sighting of just one star is all you need. You place this transparent paper under the star chart like so, then move it into place, and presto, you have the ship's position. I reckon even you could sail by this, huh? Yes. It's quite brilliant. Tell me, how does somebody who's never set foot inside a schoolroom pick up the math and geometry you need for this sort of work? Taught myself, huh? With a little help from the British Navy. I signed up as a merchant seaman out of the port of London when I was 16. Before that, I was on coasters out of my hometown in Denmark. Why have you not made something of yourself, then? Here you are in your prime and spending your time culling dumb animals to hang around women's necks. Strikes me you could have done anything you chose. For a bright guy, hump, you can be damn naive. What chance did I have? I went to sea when I was ten, like all the men in my family. Do you know the parable of the talents? Yes. Well, the high seas are a stony ground, hump. Oh! More work to be done. Half of the boats are still being patched up. Never mind, hump. I'll go out myself. I can shoot enough for two. Number two boat coming home, Mr. Van Waden. Thank you, Louis. Tack to starboard. Make ready for them to come aboard. Aye, aye, sir. A fine catch, Mr. Van Waden. Yes, sir. Best yet. No, I don't want the men stood down when they've squared up the deck. Huh? You there. Fat Louis. Aye, skipper. How's the rheumatiz, mister? Giving me hell, sir. You hear that, Mr. Van Weeden? More... more weather on the way. I'd say so. How about you, Louis? I reckon we might see something before morning, aye, sir. Oh. Pull in some canvas before you turn in, Mr. Van Weeden. Aye, aye, sir. Typhoon's blown herself out, eh, Louis? Do your old bones concur? Ah, shit, Mr. Van Waden, I'm feeling mighty spry. Let's have all hands to heave to. Hey, Jesus, will you look at that? What is it, Louis? Put your spyglass two points in the east there and tell me if these old eyes of mine are seeing things. What? My God, a seal herd. I never see them this far south. They'll be fishing up in Yokohama Harbor next. Well, the old wolf will be pleased. He didn't relish running off course before the storm. No, he didn't. Well, best go for it. All right, all hands to the boats! 
Seals ahead! Boats over! I saw the pelts sorted and stowed, Mr. Van Weyden. Thanks, Louis. Look after the mop and bucket detail. I'll go below and report to the old man. Aye, sir. Mr. Van Weyden. What in your ears, sir? What is it, Leech? Am I right in thinking the typhoon's driven us south? That's right. Can you tell me, mister, how far we are off the coast? 500 miles, I'd say. And what would be the bearings for Yokohama? West, northwest. Thank you, sir. Leech. Sir? Good luck. Thanks, mister. What are you telling me, Smoke? Did they just stole away in the dark? Aye. Right. They've taken number three boat and all the water breakers and grub boxes from the other boats. Oh, my God. And where the hell was the night watch? Yeah. I'd say that was a question for your mate. Aye. Right. Well, we'll see about that later. Come on, Smoke. I want two of your hundreds at the mastheads with spy glasses. Johnson's some sailor, but he won't outrun me in one of them cockle shells. What do you think, Louis? Needle in a haystack, if you ask me. Maybe. Maybe. But it's the third day now. Surely they've made it. It's possible, mister. But your wolf will not give up so easily. He knows what he's about. He's used his extra speed to put himself between them and the land. And now he figures if he cruises back and forth for long enough across their course, he'll happen on them sooner or later. Jesus, they're out to leeward. With this breeze behind us, we'll be down on them within the hour. Let's make her run, Mr. Enwiden. Aye, sir. God help you now, Legion Johnson. And God help us all. Hold oh, to that, Thamesman. Steady. Van Weyden? Aye, sir. Get yourself on deck and prepare to bring them aboard, whoever they are. My aye, sir. All right, lads! Hold jib sheets to windward! Make the main sheets flat! Look short! Skipper's coming about into the wind! Well, well. Talk about a bloody mess. What's wrong, Smoke? Hey, look down there, in the stern sheets. May I never shoot another seal if there ain't a woman? By, by God, Smoke, I believe it is. See what I see, Smoke? Hey, I seen her all right. Looks like a young and trim and all. I like them skinny and with their own teeth. Oh, shut your gab up on her ear, fool. I well said. If there's one thing this ship don't need, it's a female of the species. Damn bad luck. Ah, come on, Louie, you fat old side. Order! You're just a pig ignorant seal killer. But you ask any sailor aboard if a woman ain't a damn curse at sea. I tell you, it's the last thing we need. Mr. Van Weyden, carry the lady below and see to her comfort. Permit me. I'm much obliged, sir. Make up the spare port cabin, put Cookie to work on it. And see what you can do for her face. It's sunburned bad. Aye, aye, mister. Cast the boat adrift. Let's see these other survivors. There. We'll make these quarters as comfortable as we can for you. No need to go to any great trouble. The men were looking for land at any moment this morning, and now, well, we should be in by night. Uh, beg pardon, ma'am. If it were any other captain except ours, I'd say you'd be ashore in Yokohama tomorrow. But as things are, you'd best be prepared for anything. Understand? Oh, frankly, no. Unless it's a misconception of mine that shipwrecked people are always shown every consideration. No, all I'm saying is he... This man, this captain is... Hold, hold! 
My God, Leech and Johnson after all. Forgive me, ma'am. I must leave you. Break out your oil skins if I were you, Mr. Van Wade. What are we in for, Louis? Ah, uh, healthy young slip of a gaze in the breath of it, sir. With a splatter of rain just to wet our gills. Too bad we sighted them. They'd never have made the land, sir, I'm thinking. Think not. No, sir. <laughs> you hear that? Aye. Uh, There's no eggshell that'll float on this sea an hour from now. A stroke of luck, we're here to pick them up. Well, we've got ourselves three oilers and a fourth. Engineer, but we'll make sailors out of them, or boat pullers at any rate. Now, what of the lady? She'll be all right. What's her name, then? I don't know. Didn't ask her. She looked all in. I'm waiting to hear the news from you. What vessel was it? Mail steamer. The city of Tokyo. Old tub opened up from top to bottom in the typhoon. They were adrift four days. And you don't know who or what she is, eh? Maid, wife, or widow? No. Well, well. Now then, let's have a look at what Headway, Leach, and Johnson are making. <laughs> oh, look there! Yeah, keep at that, Helmsman! We're overhauling them about two to one, I'd say. What do you intend doing with Leach and Johnson? Really? I don't know. You see, with all these additions, I've about all the crew I want. And they've about all the escaping they want, by the look of them. Why not give them a change of treatment? Take them aboard and deal gently with them. Whatever they've done, they've been hounded into doing. By me? By you. And I give you warning, Wolf Larsen, that I may forget love of my own life in the desire to kill you if you go too far in punishing them. Bravo! You do me proud, Hump. You found your legs with a vengeance. You're quite an individual. You are unfortunate in having your life cast in easy places, but you're developing, and I like you the better for it. I don't care what you like. Just mind what I say. Hump, do you believe in promises? Are promises sacred to you? Of course. Of course! Then here's a compact. If I promise not to lay my hands on Leech and Johnson, will you promise in turn not to kill me? Oh! Not that I'm afraid of you, you understand? Anyway, what do you say? Is it a go? Yes, it's a go. Good. Helmsman! Keep up now! That's it, that's it! Come abreast! We're blanketing them, hump! See! Their canvas has dropped! They're coming close enough to spit it! Ahoy, Johnson! Take heart, man! Keep failing, Leech! No! You've changed your mind! You want to come aboard, eh? Well then, just keep back coming! Helmsman, hard up with that wheel! What are you doing? They can't catch us if we run before the wind! Come on, Johnson! You're the master sailor! Let's see you skip along! Skip, Johnson! Skip! Skip! Look sharp, man! Lend a hand to take in the jib! I see their eyes, mister! John Owen Leach! There's the fear of death at the heart of them! Now he'll... he'll heave to in a little while and pick them up! He's giving them a lesson, that's all! You think so? Don't you? I think nothing but of my own skin these days. I should be back in Newfoundland sailing a fishing boat! Never mind this hell ship! Pretty mess that Frisco whiskey got me into, and a prettier mess that woman's got you into aft there. I've seen it all before, and I knows you for a blithering fool. What do you mean? Don't be asking me what I mean. You'd best be wondering what the wolf means. If trouble comes, will you stand by? Stand by? 
There's fat old Louie I'll stand by. And trouble enough it'll be. We're at the beginning of things, I'm telling you, the bare beginning of things. I hadn't thought you so great a coward. If I raise never a hand for those poor beggars that stirred in their cockle shell there, you think I'm hankering after a broken head for a woman I never laid eyes on before today? Mr. Ingram, better get in those taxes! Aye, aye, sir! You see, I told you he'd put him out eventually. I hope you're right. Any sign, Mr. Smoke? God rest them. They'll fret no more. I guess you're right. I know I'm right. Five hours since the last sighting. I was playing cat and mouse with them. It's the last we've seen of Leech and Jono, I'm telling you. God, if you're out there, give them eternal rest. Amen. Aye, aye. It's the sniff of blood brings out the wolf. Well, Mr. Ed Whedon, any sign of a sail out there? No, sir. All right. Hemsmen? Aye, Cap. Put her about east nor east. Let's go and find some more seals. Aye, aye, sir. Well, Hump, the lady's name is Brewster. I got it from the engineer. Your promise, mister. What? Oh, Leech and Johnson, you mean. I wasn't thinking of taking them aboard when I made that promise. Anyway, you have to agree. I've not laid my hands on them. <laughs> Far from it. Far from it. More bread, ma'am? Thank you. What about a spot more tea, ma'am? Thank you, no. Give the lady some air cookie. Quit your fussing. Oh, I can Fuss around me. Cookie with that tea. All right, I'd pretty enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Captain Larson, and when shall we arrive at Yokohama? Four months. Four months? Possibly three if the season ends early. I... I thought... I was given to understand that Yokohama is only a day's sail away. You can't do this. It's not right. Not right? <laughs> my, you sound like my mate here. Mr. Van Waden's what you might call an authority on such things as rights. Now me, <clears throat> I'm only a sailor. And from where I'm sitting, your misfortune is certainly all right with me. Have you nothing to say, Mr. Mate? I say the situation's unfortunate. Unfortunate. But since you were voyaging to Japan for your health, I can assure you that it'll improve nowhere better than right here aboard the ghost. Mm, ah, there speaks the voice of authority. <clears throat> you should have seen him when he came on board. A more scrawny, pitiful specimen of humanity you could hardly conceive of. And mm. look at him now. True, he's not what you'd call muscular, but he has muscles, which is more than he had when he came aboard. <laughs> <laughs> also, he has legs to stand on. You'd not think so to look at him, but he was quite unable to stand alone at first. I may have learned to stand on my own legs, but I've yet to stamp upon others with them. Mm. And your education's only half completed then. Might I be taken off by some passing vessel, perhaps? Mm. There'll be no passing vessels, except other sealing schooners. I have no change of clothes, nothing. You hardly realize, sir, that I'm not a man, or that I'm unaccustomed to the careless, vagrant life that you and your men seem to lead. Well, the sooner you get accustomed to it, the better. By the way, what do you do for a living? I beg your pardon? Mm. I mean no offense, believe me. People eat, therefore they must procure the wherewithal. These men here shoot seals in order to live. I sail this schooner. <coughs> Mr. Van Waden, for the present at any rate, Earns his salty crop by assisting me. Now, what do you do? Do you feed yourself, or does someone else feed you? I'm afraid someone else has fed me most of my life. And I suppose someone else makes your bed for you? I have made beds. Very often? No, not very often. Do you know what they do to poor men in the States who, like you, don't work for their living? I'm very ignorant. What do they do to poor men like me? They send them to jail. The crime of not earning a living in their case is called vagrancy. 
If I were Mr. Van Weyden, who harps on questions of right and wrong, I'd ask by what right do you live when you do nothing to deserve living? But as you're not Mr. Van Weyden, I don't have to answer, do I? Have you ever earned a dollar by your own labor? Yes, I have. Really? I remember my father giving me a dollar once when I was a little girl for remaining absolutely quiet for five minutes. <laughs> but that was a very long time ago and you'd scarcely demand a little girl to earn her own living. At present, however, I make about $1,800 a year. Salary or piecework? Piecework. $1,800. That's uh, $150 a month. Well, Miss Brewster, there's nothing small about the ghost. Consider yourself on salary during the time you remain with us. I forgot to inquire as to the nature of your occupation. What uh, commodities do you turn out? What tools and uh, materials do you require? Paper and ink. Oh, and a typewriter. You are Maud Brewster. Uh, how do you know? Aren't you? Yes, I am. I remember writing a review of a thin little volume. You? You're? Yeah. Yes, I am. Humphrey Van Waden. <laughs> I'm so glad. I remember that review, too. Too flattering. No, not at all. Besides, mine wasn't the only one. All the other critics were with me. Didn't Lang include your, your kiss endured among the four supreme sonnets by women in the English language? Oh, you're very kind, I'm sure. Well, well, you... So you're Maud Bruce. And you are Humphrey Van Wayne. In The Sea Wolf by Jack London, Wolf Larsen was played by Jack Claff, Humphrey Van Weyden by Kerry Shale, and Maud Brewster by Shelley Thompson. Mugridge was played by Ian Jury, Louis by Nigel Anthony, Johnson by Geoffrey Gear, Leach by Scott Farrell, and Smoke by Anthony Jackson. Other parts were played by Richard Pierce, Andrew Wincott, Terence Edmund, Norman Jones, Peter Penry Jones, and Clarence Smith. The Sea Wolf is adapted for radio in four parts by Ed Thomason. Original music was composed and played by Elizabeth Parker of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The Sea Wolf is directed by Adrian Bean. Captain Larson, and when shall we arrive at Yokohama? Four months. Four months? Possibly three if the season ends early. I... I thought... I was given to understand that Yokohama is only a day's sail away. You can't do this. It's not right. Not right? My, you sound like my mate here. Mr. Van Waden's what you might call an authority on such things as rights, not me. I'm only a sailor, and from where I'm sitting, your misfortune is certainly all right with me. Might I be taken off by some passing vessel, perhaps? Mm, there'll be no passing vessels, except other sealing schooners. I have no change of clothes, nothing. You hardly realize, sir, that I'm not a man, or that I'm unaccustomed to the careless, vagrant life that you and your men seem to lead. Well, the sooner you get accustomed to it, the better. I forgot to inquire... As to the nature of your occupation, what uh, commodities do you turn out? What tools and uh, materials do you require? Paper and ink. Oh, and a typewriter. You are Maud Brewster. Uh, how do you know? Aren't you? Yes, I am. I remember writing a review of a thin little volume. You? You're... Yeah, yes, I am. Humphrey Van Weyden. I'm so glad. I remember that review, too. Too flattering. No, not at all. Besides, mine wasn't the only one. All the other critics were with me. Didn't Lang include your, your kiss endured among the four supreme sonnets by women in the English language? Oh, you're very kind, I'm sure. Well, well, you... So you're Maud Brewster. And you are Humphrey Van Wayne.
You men there, stand by the chip. Louis, ready to put about when I give the word. Aye, sir. Uh, morning, Mr. Van Waden. Good of you to join us. Miss Brewster keep you talking late, did she? After all this time, a taste of civilized company does go to the head. I just remembered it after the champagne comes to hangover. It seems to me you're the one with the sore head. Ah, um, maybe you're sickening again. Don't you ever mention that, do you hear? I'm never sick. That head pain was a fluke, a one-off. Well, I can see that you're on the rampage, mister, whatever the cause. So let me just point out that I was on deck at daybreak. The watch was in place and awake. All canvas was tightened up as soon as the dew burnt off, sir. Very good, Mr. Van Waden. You're the model mate. But I've other fish to fry. Be so good as to call Cookie on deck. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Mugridge! Oh, on deck, sir! Fine day for a dip, eh, Cookie? Uh, how do you mean, sir? You know damn well what I mean, man. I gave you fair warning. I told you to clean up that galley. I told you to change your shirt regular. I have changed it, sir. Shut your mouth, you scumbag. I've given you warning, and now you must take your medicine. You there. Kelly? Bring out a bowline. Oh, go! Get out! Leave me be, you bastard! Takes three of you, done it! I'll bleed and do you for this! You hold still now, man! Oh, Captain, don't do this to me! I'm not a well man! The bloody water will freeze me to death! Come on, lads! Hold his arms! Get it! Now, make that fast around this middle! God, man, this is long overdue! You smell like a midden! Right! Over the side with him! Good morning, Miss Brewster. Good morning. What's going on? It sounds like a football game. I'm afraid Larson didn't like our cutting him from the conversation last night. He's taking out his umbrage on the cook. Oh, my goodness. Is, is that the man in the water? Yes. Larson's teaching him a lesson in personal cleanliness. Shark! Oh! Let us stop it, Mr. Van Wayden! I see it, Louis! Shark! 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 You must excuse me, ma'am! Even! Lively! All hands, tail and heave! And again! One, two, heave! That's it! Here he comes! Oh, God! He got me! He got me! Did you see what happened, Helms? I did, ma'am. The shark took a jump at him as he came clear of the water. He got me, Skimmer! He bloody got me! Hold still, Cookie, while I wind this tourniquet good and tight. God! He's cutting into me! Two of you, there! Get this man below! Mr. Van Wienen, prepare a hot iron! Aye, aye. Man play, Miss Brewster. Rougher than what you might be used to, I suppose. Is... is that man all right? He'll survive. I didn't reckon on the shark. It was what you might call providence. Oh. Eh, he was a lousy cook anyway. The Sea Wolf by Jack London. Starring Jack Claff as Wolf Larson, Kerry Shale as Humphrey Van Waden, and Shelley Thompson as Maud Brewster. Episode 3 The shark was all of 16 feet long. They baited a swivel hook with salt pork. By the time I'd cauterized the stump of Mugridge's leg, the shark was caught and hoisted up against the main rigging. Larson had them pry apart the jaws. Then he sharpened a piece of timber at both ends and stuck it in the beast's mouth so that once the prize were taken away, the spread jaws were fixed open. Then they cut out the hook and threw the shark back into the sea. It had all its strength, but won't be able to feed. It will starve to death, slowly. 
I dwell on these details, Miss Brewster, because I want you to be absolutely clear about what sort of man controls this ship. I think I'm clear about Larson. I'm wondering about you, Mr. Van Weyden. What do you mean? Mr. Haskins, the engineer who was saved with me, tells me that the day we were rescued, two men weren't so lucky. Larson refused to pick them up. They were left to fend for themselves in a small boat, deliberately left to drown. They were murdered. Yes, that's true. And you permitted it. I was unable to prevent it. But you tried to prevent it? I wish I could say that I had. But why didn't you? Miss Brewster, you don't yet understand the laws of this, this strange floating world you've been thrust into. I mean, what would you advise? That I should take a knife or a, a gun or an axe and kill Larson? No, of course I'm then not. Then what should I do? Kill myself? Violence isn't the only way. There's such a thing as moral courage. And moral courage is never without effect. Ah, I should let him kill me. Oh, oh, I see. That's not what I... Forgive I'm... me, ma'am, but the men who died were my shipmates. One of them wasn't much more than a lad of 19 or so, and he had moral courage in spades. So had the other man, if it comes to that. Not only did it not stand them in good stead, it actually helped destroy them. You've got to understand, I've only survived this long because of Wolf Larson's whim. I'm a slave on this ship. And now so are you. Surely You'll never beat this man at his own game. Believe me, your only chance is to play along with him. Play along with a murderer. Come now, Miss Brewster. Forgive me for being blunt, but I might not get another chance to talk to you alone. I can, I can tell you've been used to, what shall I call it, managing people with your eyes, letting your own moral courage shine out. Mr. Van Weyden, you're impertinent. Please don't take offense where none is intended. There really isn't time. I'm talking about survival here. Don't. Try it with Larson. Miss Brewster, we might just make it if we agree to work together. We have to be allies, but we mustn't let him know that we are. What do you intend to do? I don't know yet, but I know what you mustn't do. Don't cross him in any way. Smile and be friendly, no matter how repulsive it may be. What are you suggesting I do? Play the little woman? Perhaps I should apply for the cook's position. No, not at all. Uh, talk to him about your work. My writing? As yes, strange as it may seem, he likes to talk about philosophy and literature. He keeps quite a library in his quarters. You'll find him an attentive listener, and no fool. Boil up some tea and bring it to my cabin. Aye, aye, sir. But if you attempt, in any way at all, to take him on, he'll treat you exactly as he did that shark. I've always been proud of the fact that I discovered him. Miss Brewster. Captain. Don't. Let me interrupt, Hump. We were just chatting about Harris, his poem, The Forge. You see, the editors were afraid of him, Miss Brewster, and the publishers didn't want to know, but that all changed after he published The Forge. And wasn't it a, a newspaper poem? Yes, yes, it did happen to surface first in a newspaper. I remember The Forge, full of pretty sentiments and an almighty faith in human illusions. By the way, Mr. Van Weyden, you better look in on Cookie. He's complaining and restless. Aye, aye, sir. Well, we'll continue this another time, Miss Brewster. I hope you'll give my views some consideration. Au revoir, Mr. Van Weyden. Well, ma'am, you seem lively enough in spite of your ordeal. I have a strong constitution, sir. Good. You need it. Though you look as if a fresh breeze would break you in half. Looks can be deceptive, Captain Larson. Number three boat? Who the hell's owner? Still in his bunk, last I seen him. Lazy bastard. Kick him out, will you? All right. This fog a nuisance, Mr. Smoke. Oh, don't stop me, Mr. Mate. If we wait for clear weather, we might lose that herd out there. A boat could go out into that and never be seen again. What's that you say? Nothing, mister, nothing. What are we waiting for, Mr. Van Wait? There's seals out there. Get the boats over the side. Aye, aye, sir. Come on.
Come on, men! Boats away! No way there! You have hold hold there. You have hold there. You know, I was just thinking. You've tried me on every job except going out for seals. Anchoring to do some hunting, are you? I'd certainly like to take one of the boats out sometime, yes. I bet you would. Especially while the ship sucked in with a good sick fog, eh? I don't know what you mean. Listen, Hum, don't play me for a fool. And don't think that I'm particularly concerned about you. If you disappear into the fog one of these days, I find myself another mate, that's all. But a boat's a different matter. A boat's meat and potatoes to me. It's my livelihood, mister. Understand? Nobody takes away my living without I make them pay, all right? So no more talk of taking yourself out in a boat. Get yourself far and let's put those hunters to work. There's money to be made. A ah, fine night, Louis. Aye, it's a fair westerly. I'll take a turn about the deck. Mr. Van Weyden. Huh? I didn't see you there, Miss Brewster. It's other eyes I'm avoiding. Are you all right? Mr. Van Weyden, I was wrong to judge you the way I did at first. Oh, please, it doesn't matter. No. I spoke to you like a school ma'am, and I'm sorry. It's a fault of mine, I'm afraid. You weren't to know. Mr. Van Weyden, can I confide in you? Of course. What is it? I've always thought of myself as a strong person. But after one week in the presence of that man, I feel as vulnerable as a child. You were right about his talk. He wouldn't be out of place in any salon as far as his conversation goes. But his eyes are something else. He all but devours one, his eyes. It's a most unnerving sensation. I tell you, Mr. Van Weyden... I've never been so frightened of another human being since I was a child. It does not show, I can assure you. You're doing wonderfully well. Don't forget, you have an ally. I'll do what I can to deflect him from you. All will come right, Miss Brewster. I hope so. Trust me, it will come right. Why not try to rest now? There'll not be much sleep to be had at daybreak when the boats go over the side. Yes, I will. Thank you, Mr. Van Weyden. Good night, Miss Brewster. Good night. Uh, choppy waters ahead, mister. You think so? What do those old bones tell you, Louis? <laughs> Same as your young blood's telling you, I reckon. What do you mean? Ah, uh, don't give me that. You may have lived most of your life between the covers of books, but you're not a monk. Why, happy Jesus, every man jack of all is rising to the rustle of that skirt. And you're no different, mister. Well, I must say the chow's improved since Cookie's been confined to his bunk. It's an ill wind, eh, Mr. Van Weyden? I'll convey your compliments to the galley, sir. Will you have some more potatoes, ma'am? Thank you. <clears throat> I like to see a woman eat well, eh, Horner? Aye, aye. Appetite is healthy, eh, man? <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. You eat hearty, fatten yourself up. Uh, there's too many females with so much skin and bone. Old smoke like something to get a bit of purchase on, eh, smoke? Shut your mouth. <laughs> Mr. Van Weyden? Sir? Give orders to the galley from now on. The hunters will take meals in their own quarters. Anything to say about that, Smoke? Hunters is men to sit at the captain's table. Shut your mouth, Latimer. What was that, Skipper? I asked you if you had anything to say. About what? Oh, nothing. I just thought you might want to register a kick. About what? Steve How's it bear? Get a stern, sir! A steamer? Maybe it's a, a Russian patrol boat. We haven't been poaching in Russian waters by any chance, have we, Skipper? We're dead safe. No salt mines this time, Smoke. But I tell you what, I'll lay five to one it's the Macedonia. And if it is, 
I'll give you ten to one there's trouble breezing up. No, thanks. I don't mind losing my money, but I like to get a run for it at least. Never was a time there wasn't trouble when you and that brother of yours got together. And I'll lay twenty to one on that. Yeah, well. Let's go and take a look. Wolf Larsen has a brother? Apparently so. Another one from the same litter. Why are you smiling, Mr. Van Weyden? Because that was precisely my reaction when I was first told about Death Larsen. Death Larsen. That's his name, apparently. There's no love lost between them, and if you can imagine such a thing, Death Larsen is as feared a skipper as the wolf. Seals ho! Seals! I must go on deck and get the boats away. At least the Macedonia will keep Larson's mind occupied while it's around. Mr. Van Weeden. Sir. Look, over yonder. Can you spyglass sneak out the name on the hull? Yes, it's the Macedonia, all right. And steaming towards our boats. I damn him. Where's the trouble you were so sure was breezing up, Captain Larson? What were you expecting? That they'd come aboard and cut our throats? Something like that. I'm learning to expect anything from seal hunters. Quite right. Your only mistake is in not expecting the worst. What can be worse than cutting our throats? Cutting our purses. Who steals my purse steals trash. Who steals my purse steals my right to live. There ain't enough soup kitchens to go around, you know. And when men have nothing in their purse, they usually die, and die miserably, unless they're able to feed their purses pretty speedily. But I still don't see how this steamer has designs on your purse. Wait, and you'll see. All right, make those lines fast! Let's have the last of those carcasses! Look sharp! Did you see that, Mr. Van Weep? Fourteen boats that bastard put down! Fourteen bastards! They robbed us. Did the skipper see? You bet, mister. He watched it all through the spyglass. <laughs> they cut us right off from the herd! Left us with about three frigging miles to work on! Damn these lassies! There ought to be a law! That was the best day's picking so far! Why, those seals were lying about thick as a carpet! Eh? Hey. And then Death Larson steams right through the big bastard yeah. and drops his boats between us and the herd. There were 14 to our five. What can we do? We did the best we could. Listen to them. What do you make of it, Miss Brewster? Do you hear any high ideas? Do you hear them harping on the good, the beautiful, the true? Their innate sense of right has been violated. Uh, I can see you pay your subs to the same club as Mr. Van Weeden there. You're a sentimentalist. It's nothing to do with their innate sense of right. They don't want right. They want good grub and soft beds when they get ashore. They want their women and their drink. And to get them, they need a handsome payday. You hardly behave as if your purse has been hit. Don't you believe it? At the current price of seal pelts in the London market, the Macedonia has robbed me of about $1,500 worth. But you speak so calmly. <laughs> I'm not feeling calm, I assure you. I've been waylaid and I could kill the man who's done it. Your own brother? Yes. Miss Brewster, if I had him here now within my arm's reach, I'd break his neck and good riddance, brother or no brother. I don't believe you. Of course you don't. You're a sentimentalist, a dreamer. You look for good in everything and because you want to find it, you do. Ah, hump! What about you? You find any good in me? In a, in a way. Oh, yes? What way's that? Well, uh, aesthetically, I guess. There's a, there's a bearing about you that's good to look at. But that ignores the inner man. You have a potential for good within you. Within me? Where? Anatomize me, if you will, and lay out my potential for good. Your words are empty to me. There's nothing clear and sharp about the thought you've expressed. You can't pick it up in your two hands and look at it, and I'll tell you why. Because it's not a thought. It's a feeling, a sentiment, an illusion. Well, 
Well, well, well. You know, sometimes I catch myself wishing I was blind, like you. Blind to the facts of human nature. After all, it's more a pleasure to be head from illusions. Sometimes I feel like a sober man looking at drunks and wishing he was drunk too. Or like a wise man looking at fools. Yes. You're a blessed, bankrupt pair of fools. You have no facts in your purse. Yet we spend more freely than you. Because it costs you nothing. Why don't you change the basis of your coinage if it's so unrewarding? Too late, too late. I'd like to, maybe. But I can't. Well, well. It's a bleak way of thinking. Even Wolf Larsen must howl at the moon sometimes. Do I detect a note of sympathy? Oh, I have the same sympathy for him as I do for any wild animal. He was taken with a vile headache some weeks back. It laid him low, and I nursed him through it. It really was like having a dumb animal on my hands. He was totally helpless, totally dependent on me. But it was only an interlude. Oh, God help the man who's put him in this mood tonight. The brother. Oh, yes. But surely, with the Macedonia, with all her steam power, I mean, Death Larson can do as he pleases. If he were up against anybody else, I'd agree. But there's nothing so dangerous as a wounded wolf. You been on deck this morning, Mr. Van Weyden? How do things look? Clear enough. The sunshine's lovely. The breeze is still westerly. A promise of stiffening, if Louis predicts correctly. Good. Any sign of fog? Thick banks in the north and northwest. That's very good. What of the Macedonia? Not sighted. No. Slaver! Oh! Huh? That he comes. Smoke! He seems in high good humor. Yes, I fear he is. I'll go and see to the boats. Come up in a little while. That way you can see what happens and I can keep an eye out for you. Lower away, lad! Let's go put ourselves some bigger. Good hunting, smoker! What's up? Never mind what's up, Mr. Van Weyden. You won't be a thousand years in finding out, and in the meantime, just braver plenty of wind. Oh, well, I don't mind telling you. I'm gonna give that brother of mine a taste of his own medicine. Play the hog myself, and not just for one day, for the rest of the season, if we're in luck. And if we're not? <laughs> not to be considered. We simply must be in luck, or it's all up with us. Anyway, leave me to it. And go for it to your sick patient. Well, Cookie. I guess they don't come much tougher than you, after all. Yeah. I ain't ready to drop off the purse just yet. I've got to hang on a while longer. That's the spirit. Why, with an artificial foot. And they make excellent ones. You'll be stumping ship's galleys to the end of time. Oh, I don't know about that. All I know is I ain't gonna rest happy until I seize that devil dead. It can't live as long as me. That'll do, Mugridge. I know how you feel, but you should have learned by now to keep your mouth shut. He's got no right to live. And as the good word puts it, he shall surely die. And I say amen, and damn soon at that. Mr. Van Weyden, the captain seems mightily preoccupied, but through my landlubber's eyes, I can't for the life of me see anything untoward. Step up here and look through the spyglass, Miss Brewster. There are things to be seen, all right. You see there, those are our boats. Yes, yes, 
I see them quite clearly. Why, I can even make out Mr. Smoke's tattoos. Now, look ahead of ours. Yes, more boats. Yes, those are the Macedonia's boats, hogging the catch again. But as I said yesterday, I don't see what Larson can do against all that steam power. Well, I think I have an idea. Give me the glass a moment. Yes. Now, take another look at Smoke's boat. Yes, I have him. That gun he has across his knees is a rifle. What about it? Don't they shoot the seals with rifles? No, no. A seal shot at long range with a rifle invariably sinks before you can get to it. I fear Smoke has other targets in mind. You see the way the Macedonia's weather boats, those five over yonder, the mm. furthest from the Macedonia itself, are being pushed away from the other boats in their line. Yes. They seem to be coming dead ahead of us. Now you have it, Miss Brewster. Mr. Unwaited? Sir! Stand by to back over the chips. We're going visiting. Aye, aye, sir. All right, Mr. Van Weyden. Go to the rail and invite those men aboard for a gam. Aye, aye, sir. You men there! We know you're from the Macedonia. Captain Wolf Larson extends his greeting and would like to invite you aboard. That's it. Step aboard, step aboard. Who's top head here? That's me. Telefson's the name. All right. Telefson, send your two men for it, and you come below with me, and I'll break out a bottle. I don't want to be too long away. No, of course not. I just want to extend a little hospitality and catch up on the gossip, eh? Take yourself below now. Your two mates there can keep an eye on your boat. All right. Stand down, lads. I'll be back in 15 minutes. You will please stay on deck, Miss Brewster. Very well. And you too, Mr. Van Weeden? Aye, aye, sir. My goodness. That Tellefson is a veritable Viking. <laughs> Even dwarfs Larson. Aye. Much good may it do him. <laughs> That, Miss Brewster, is the sacredness of our hospitalitas. Perhaps it might be better if you went forward, say, by the steerage companionway till this is all over. I'll be all right. Don't forget that whatever part I take in what's to come, I, I do it because I have to if we are ever to get out of this. I understand. Mr. Van Weyden? Sir. Go forward and tell those two men to hoist in their boat. The hunters decided to stay aboard a while. Aye, aye, sir. All right, you men! Does he mean to haul in all their weather boats? Not all. One more, maybe. Just enough to even up the odds for Smoke and his cronies to pick off the others without too much trouble. Miss Brewster, take yourself below! After what I heard going on below, I think I'd rather stay here on deck. Oh, you won't find nothing gruesome down there. Only our friend Telefson made fast to the ringboats. But it might get warm here. Bullets are likely to come aboard, and I don't want you killed, you know? You see? Ah. Mr. Van Weyden? Sir! Take over the wheel! Aye, aye, sir! I'll go no further than the companionway opening here. We may be feeble pen-pushers without legs, Captain Larson, but we can show you that we're every bit as brave as you. I like you a hundred percent better for that! Books and brains and bravery! You're well rounded! A blue stocking fit to be the wife of a pirate chief! Well, we'll discuss that later. Hold her steady, Mr. Van Weeden. If I can send this one home, we'll have no trouble picking up some more guests. Damn! Bring her in a little closer, Mr. Van Weeden. I guess that'll fix them. You shot that man. Don't worry, Miss Brewster, he was only the boat steerer. I couldn't afford to let the hunter have it, and I'm hoping the boat puller doesn't know how to steer, in which case the hunter can't shoot and steer at the same time. Take another look through your spyglass and see if I'm right. The man has certainly dropped his rifle and has taken the helm. Good. Mr. Van Weyden, keep her steady at that. 
I'll throw them a line. Aye, aye, sir. Why? I'm sure I saw the man move. He's not dead. No, ma'am. Not with a shoulder wound. He ain't. Nothing serious. Mr. Van Waden will pull him round in two or three weeks. Oh, no. What is it, Miss Brewster? Just there. Beyond this next boat, there's another one. Ah, that's smoke and harness work. You won't be pulling any of those men round, huh? I told Smoke we wanted life men, not carcasses, damn it, but... That's the joy of shooting to hit is the most compelling thing once you've learned how to shoot. Ever experienced it? No, sir. God. Um, you don't live. Well, <clears throat> we pick up this boat with a wing steerer, and then we'll head on into the bunch. Sounds as though the shooting's over anyway. We have a pretty full crew in spite of Smoke and Horner killing those three beggars. You intend to hijack these boats? I don't intend to, ma'am. I'm doing it. Skipper! Steamer there, due northeast! Yes, I've been watching it. How far would you say to the fog bank yonder, mister? Seven or eight miles. Yeah. Nearer ten, I'd say. But we'll make it, I think. That steamer's getting nearer. Uh, oh, sure. You can bet your life he's tweaked our little game and he's just a uh, humping for us. I'll beat you out, though, bread of mine. I'll beat you out. And I wish you no worse than that you rack your engines into scrap. Hoist it in! Close the line! Heave! Heave! Here she comes. Steady. Swing in that tackle there! All right, corner. Anderson. All right. Pick up prisoners to the folks. All right. Come on, move your butt. This ain't no pleasure cruise. Let's have that boat to board sharp, mister! Lack up those sheets there! Stand by to get underway! Mr. Van Wieden? So, this is the last of the boats coming aboard! As soon as she's clear of the water, let's make headway! Yes, sir! Macedonia's charging along. He's not bothering to pick up his other boat. He, he's steaming straight for us. No, he's, he's not running straight for us. He's, he's trying to get ahead of us. Our courses are converging on that fog bank yonder. If the Macedonia gets there first, it's the end of us. I'll take over the wheel, mister. <laughs> Aye, sir. We have to draw every last ounce of speed out of the old ghost. Go down on deck, Mr. Van Waden, and tell the hunters to stand by with their rifles at the lee rail. Aye, aye. Are you expecting more shooting? Well, he has no rivals on board, but... Look there! That's what I expected. He's firing off his cannon! Nice shot. Put a hole through our main sail. Damn him. Here comes another. There she goes. Twenty feet astern, skimming like a pebble. See her? Yes, I did. He's going to blow us out of the water. Ah, uh, his first shot was a fluke. He'd be lucky to pat the coast while she's skybooting through the brine at this rate of knots. Huh? We've made it. Here comes the fog. Mr. Van Waden, go far and hard a lee without a sound. You hear? Aye, sir. Clue up the top sails first. Set men at all the sheets. I want no rattling of blocks, no sound of voices, no noise. Understand? No noise. Aye, aye, mister. You see what I am about, Miss Brewster? I think so. You've led the Macedonian into the fog, and now you're putting about to try and shake him off. Aye, that's right. You break out of the fog, sail along it for a while, and then go back into leeward, cat and mouse him until he has to give up and go back for what's left of his boats. I'd give five hundred dollars to be aboard the Macedonia just to hear that brother of mine cursing. All the watches are set, mister. Thank you, Mr. Van Waden. Keep this course, helmsman. Aye, Skipper. We won't do any lingering tonight. You think we've lost him? Oh, sure. Listen, we must make the newcomers welcome. Serve out plenty of whiskey to the hunters and see that a few bottles slip forward. 
I bet you any money every man jack at him is over the side tomorrow, uh, hunting for wolf larceny as contentedly as ever they hunted for death larceny. You don't think they'll make a run for it? Try to get back to the Macedonian? Not as long as our hunters have any say in the matter. I promised Smoke and his men a dollar a skin for all the skins shot by the new hunters. Why else do you think everybody pulled so hard to get it today to get them boats aboard and out Fox and Macedonia? Oh no, there won't be any escaping. And come on, man. Break out the whiskey. Uh, drink up, comrades. <laughs> More of this, Tillotson, and you won't feel them bruises the wolf gave you. Your skipper's an animal. Hey, he's your skipper now. No way. You'd better believe it, old comrade. Yeah, you're working for the wolf now. Larson won't get away with it. He can't outrun the Macedonia forever. Death Larson will break his back for this. Don't hold your breath on that one, Tillotson. Nobody breaks the wolf. Yeah, so don't go getting any ideas. Skipper's been easy on you so far. That's right. In Hakadari two years ago, I seen him kill a man bigger than you, Tillotson. This guy was a giant. And the wolf killed him, ditto, with one punch of his fist. Guy's head smashed like an egg. Yeah. Skipper don't care what he does, who he does it to. Hey, tell about that time with them Jap smoke. Remember Kura Island? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we put into Kura Island one time, and aboard comes the governor and the chief of police, and they brings their little wee wives with them. Pretty little bits of things like you see painted on there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, we're just getting underway and blow me. If the little Jap husbands don't get left to stern in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda like it was an accident, see? <laughs> and them little girls didn't get put ashore until a week later. And then on the other side of the island with nothing on their feet but little straw sandals for a hike home over the mountains. Not that they was in any condition for walking. <laughs> yeah, that's the wolf for you, Mr. Tallifson. Sounds like some of the hoots has gone forward. Yeah, come on now. Got some catching up to do. As I see it, a man does things because of desire. He may desire to escape pain or to enjoy pleasure, but whatever he does, he does because he desires to do it. Suppose he desires to do two opposite things, neither of which will permit him to do the other. Hmm, the very thing I was coming to. Ah, Mr. Van Weyden, how goes it? Well, I think you, me, and Louis are the only sober men aboard. You've let loose a positive Saturnalia, which is no doubt what you intended. And how are the wounded? Drunk as well, and shrieking curses on your head. No, so tell me something new. Ah, oh, well, <clears throat> forget all that. Join us, Mr. Van Weyden. Miss Brewster is challenging my notion that man is motivated only by desire. When the conflict comes between two mutually excluding desires, that's precisely when the soul of a man becomes manifest. A good soul will desire and do the good action. On the contrary, if it's a bad soul, it's the soul that decides. Bears are nonsense. It's the desire decides. A man wants to get drunk, all right? But suppose he also doesn't want to get drunk. What does he do? He simply obeys the strongest desire, that's all. He's a puppet of his desire. If the desire to stay sober prevails, it's because that's got the strongest pull. I say you're both talking bilge. Mm. Well, why are we now? You're hair splitting. You deny the soul. No, I do not. Show it to me, then. You've already done that, but you don't realize it. Why don't I realize? That a man's soul is his desires. Oh, come now, sir. Or if you will, the sum of his desires is his soul. Bash! You're simply playing with words. Be easy with you. What's the matter, Louis? The fog's breaking up. It is the port light of a steamer that's crossing our bow this blessed minute. Come on, quickly. Louis, get yourself fired fast as you can and close the forecastle scuttle. Aye, aye. Mr. Van Weyden, we'll you can the steerage slide over the rest of that drunken clamor. Shout, man. Aye, aye, mister. Not a sound as you go. All battened down, Skipper. That's about as quiet as we're gonna get. There she is. See that light there? Yes. So close. I can hear the engines. Is it the Macedonia? That's her, all right. Lucky for us, he don't carry a searchlight. What if I were to shout out after her? It'd be all up. 
But have you thought about what would immediately happen? <coughs> easy now, easy. One tiny sound and I break your scrawny neck. Point taken. Point taken. Good. I like a person who's quick on the uptake. Uh, what if I shouted out? Would you break my neck too? No, I wouldn't do that. I like you too well to hurt you. Don't do it though, just the same, because then I wouldn't hesitate to kill Mr. Van Weyden. In that case, she has my permission to yell as loud as she can. How about it, Miss Brewster? Care to sacrifice the Dean Elect of American Letters? Go ahead, scream if you want. Too late. Look, the fog has swallowed up the Macedonia again. Ah. So it is. Ah oh, well. Mr. Van Weyden, I do believe you're quite pale. Come along. Let's finish supper. We'll not let death, Larson, cheat us of mud. Talk. He can't succeed. He will succeed. He couldn't succeed. He was the fall guy. As it were. His was the last cause. I exactly. He led a last cause and he wasn't afraid of God's thunderbolts. Hurled into hell, he was unbidden. Unbowed, he was a free spirit to serve was to suffocate. He stood on his own legs. He was an individual. <laughs> the first anarchist. <laughs> well, Captain Larson, I, I fear you've exhausted me. I must say good night. Well then, it's good to be an anarchist here here, at least we shall be free. The Almighty has not built here for his envy, will not drive us hence. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. You're a born Lucifer, Captain. Bravo. Mr. Anwayden. Sir? Hand me my cap and coat there, mister. Thank you. My head's hurting me some all of a sudden. Need some air. I'll relieve Louis at the wheel. You can take over from me later. Better turn in now and get some sleep. Aye, aye, sir. All clear now, sir. Fog's lifting. Now, the old Macedonia seems to have dragged it all off with her. <laughs> yeah, you're all right, sir. What's the matter? I'm fine, Louis. I, I couldn't sleep, that's all. Yeah. Sure, so you look as though you'd seen old Jono clambering back out of the drink, God rest him. No, it's... It's what I'm not seeing that concerns me, Louis. Where's the skipper? Right below, as far as I know. He... He said he was going to take over the helm from you. you. You haven't seen him? I'm telling you. I've not seen a soul since the two of you went below with that bit of skirt. My God. Miss Brewster. What's the matter with me? I must be half asleep. That's it. Squirm. My God, you were built to squirm. I've got you and I won't let go. You don't fool me. You've been giving me the Come on, since we took you aboard, that book chat's all very well, but your eyes give you away, girl. I fascinate you, don't I? Never been so close to a real man, have you? You want me. Admit it. Okay. Yeah. You want to squirm around some first, eh? That's okay. I like that. Like to feel that little body G'd up to full stretch. Let but me I'm go. gonna break you, girl. Lisa! Let her go! Hard go! Keep part of this hump if you know what's good for you! I warn you, Lawson. 
I have a knife. Wait! Mr. Van Weyden, wait! Ken, wait, wait. You'll never humiliate me again! Mr. Uh, for God's sake! Can! Please uh, do my sake! I'll uh, kill uh, it for your sake! Put up the uh, knife! Please, uh, don't you see? Uh, what? Something's happened to you. He let me go before you stabbed him. Henry Raiden! Henry Raiden, where, where are you? Here I am. What's the matter with you? Help me do a scene. We'll both help. Wait! He's not to be trusted. For pity's sake. A sick man. Help. Very sick man. Come on. Help him into this chair. Oh, I'm, I'm a sick man. What's the matter? What can we do for huh? you? Where are you? I'm here. Don't want that slut near me. I must make it to my bunk. Lend a hand, will you? I'll be all right in a little while. This damn headache. I've been waiting for something like this. I had a feeling I... No, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. How is he? Has he lost much blood? Uh, the knife wound is only a scratch. What's happened to him, then? Do you think it's some sort of a stroke? I, I don't know. Possibly. He's had these headache attacks before. They can be quite bad for days at a time, but I, I've never seen him like this. He's unnerved. Frightened. For the first time in his life, I shouldn't wonder. Yes, quite. Oh, it was so odd. One minute it was like being in the grip of a grizzly, and then he let me go and staggered away. It's awful to see such a pitiful transformation in a man like that. Your sympathy is admirable, Miss Brewster. But in the meantime, we have been dealt an opportunity here. What do you mean? Well, Larson is down. The ship's company is insensible. We must take advantage. Come on. Tread quietly. Wait for me at the top of the companionway steps until I give you the nod. How goes it, Louis? Fine. How goes it below? Oh, Skipper's turned in with one of his headaches. Yeah. Why don't you go forward to your bunk? I'll take over here. Well, I don't mind if I do. Right, good night now, mister. Good night, Louis. Miss Brewster. All right, here. Hold the wheel steady. Aye, aye, mister. Can you manage? It's harder work than it looks. Once I've trimmed down, I can lash the wheel in place. I'll be about 15 minutes. I'm going to clue up the top sails and lower the jib and stay sail. Uh, your jib is so much gibberish to me. Just go and come back as quickly as possible. Aye, aye. Good. Let's look in on Larson. I want to take away his rifle and shotgun. All right? All right. Well now, mister, how goes it? It's you, huh? Ah, it's me, mister. Everybody else aboard is out cold. Anything I can do for you? No, no, I'm all right. Leave me beat till morning. Aye, aye, sir. Goodbye, Lucifer. Now, Miss Brewster, are you up to some more manual work? What do you have in mind? We must go to the lazarette store and take away as much tinned stuff and such like as we can load into one of the boats. You'll trust me, won't you, for a journey of some 600 miles. The both of us, you mean? Yes, I mean just that. After tonight, there's nothing left for us but the open boat. Oh, that's certainly true for me. But you're as safe as ever you have been. No, there's nothing left for us but the open boat. Will you please dress as warmly as you can and make a bundle of anything else you want to bring with you? I'll go to the slop chest first and break out oil skins and mittens and blankets. Then I'll go to the lazarette, which is under the floor by the galley, and haul out the stores. Join me there, and be as quick as you can. Very well. Well, that's all she'll take, I reckon. Me too. I'm exhausted. You can rest up as soon as I've got her into the water. 
Now, what was that noise? What? Listen. <gasps> Quickly, into the shadow of the boat. Oh, skinful. <laughs> Bloody skinful. Goes through you like water. Did he see us? What's he doing? Better not look around. Oh, come on, come on, before you piss your pants. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's good. Oh, oh, it's a fine night. Fine night. And Dublin's fair city. Well, gals are too pretty. I first oh, really? At least he was down there. Now, come on. We must get the boat over the side. Here. Hold on to my arm. That boat seems an awfully long way away down there. The sea is going to raise her up at any moment. Here she comes. Let me know when your feet touch and I'll let you go. Yes, now. Go. All right. Fine, thanks. Good. I'm casting off the tackle. Watch out below. Here I come. Go. Oh. 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 Uh. <sighs> There. We're clear of that hell ship at last. We've made it. Japan lies straight before us. Humphrey Van Waden, you are a brave man. Oh, nay. It's you who are a brave woman. <laughs> <laughs> In The Sea Wolf by Jack London, Wolf Larsen was played by Jack Clough, Humphrey Van Weyden by Kerry Shale, and Maud Brewster by Shelley Thompson. Mugridge was played by Ian Dury, Smoke by Anthony Jackson, and Louis by Nigel Anthony. Other parts were played by Charles Millam, Richard Pierce, Andrew Wincott, Norman Jones, Peter Penry Jones, and Clarence Smith. The Sea Wolf is adapted for radio in four parts by Ed Thomason. Original music was composed and played by Elizabeth Parker of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The Sea Wolf is directed by Adrian Bean. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Van Waden. Good morning. Oh, have you been steering all night? I guess so. <sighs> have you sighted land yet? No, but I reckon we're approaching it at the rate of six miles an hour. Six miles an hour? But that makes 144 miles in every 24. And how far have we to go? Well, Siberia lies off there to the west, but to the southwest, some 600 miles or so, I should say, is Japan. Now, if this wind were to hold, we'll make it in five days. And if it storms, surely this little boat could not live. Oh, it would have to storm very hard. And if it does storm very hard. Well, who knows? It may not come to that. We may be picked up at any moment by a sealing schooner. There are plenty of them in these waters. Oh, why, you're chilled through. Look, you're shivering. Don't deny it, you are. And here I am, lying in this nest of blankets warm as toast. Well, I don't see how it would help matters if you sat up too and were chilled. It will, though, when I learn to steer, which I certainly shall. Just give me a moment to make myself ready. Why don't women always wear their hair loose? It's so much more beautiful. I would if it didn't tangle so dreadfully. Oh, drat. I've dropped one of my precious pins. There it is. I... It's all right, I have it. Oh my goodness, what's happening? Oh, it's, it's no problem. I was neglecting my steering and we ran into the wind. I'm going to wedge this steering oar and lash it into place and then we'll have breakfast. You must dig out some warmer clothing for yourself.
The Sea Wolf by Jack London. Starring Jack Claff as Wolf Larsen, Kerry Shale as Humphrey Van Weyden, and Shelley Thompson as Maud Brewster. Episode 4. Biscuit for you. Oh. How about this can of tongue? Oh, <laughs> no coffee, I'm afraid. Mm. What wouldn't I give for a steaming cup of Java? Mm. There'll be nothing hot till we've made land somewhere, somehow. Mm. Yeah, at least we have lots of fresh water. I took the water breakers from all the other boats aboard the ghost. There. A slice of tongue for your biscuit. Thank you. It does very well, your steering device. To my landlubber's eyes, anyway. No, oh, it'll only serve while we're sailing by the wind. Mm. <laughs> With the wind astern, say, or on the quarter, I'll have to steer. Oh, I don't understand the technicalities, but I can see what the upshot is, and I don't like it. You can't steer night and day, so as soon as we finish breakfast, I want my first lesson, and then you shall lie down and sleep. We'll stand watches, just as they do on ships. I don't know if I can teach you. I'm only just learning myself. Then we'll learn together, sir. And since you've had a night's start, you can teach me what you've learned so far. But first, let's eat. <laughs> More of that tongue, please. Mm. Oh, my. This air brings on the appetite. <laughs> She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses. Oh. She'll be coming round the mountain yeah. when she... Uh, whoa. Oh. Oh. Well, mm. good afternoon, sir. What? Afternoon? What, what time is it? Uh. Oh. One o'clock. Why, you let me sleep... Seven hours. I, I am rather tired. You're frozen. Come lie down at once. Why on earth didn't you wake me? Oh, now don't scold. Please, please, don't scold. I, I wouldn't dream of it. If I look angry, I, I don't mean to. Uh, you look reproachful. Well, I must say, I, I feel a bit reproachful. You haven't been fair to yourself, uh, nor to me. How can I trust you again? I'll be good. Promise. Please don't even look reproachful. Please. You promise to obey me as a sailor would his captain? Yes. It's stupid of me, I know. Will you promise something else? Oh, really. Promise me you won't say please, please too often. Uh, if you do, it's bound to override my authority. <laughs> oh, you found me out. It's a good word, but... But I, I mustn't overwork it. <laughs> quite. Now I can see that you're done here. So to bed with you. And that's an order. Aye, aye, sir. She takes this buffeting well for such a little thing. Yes. The provisions and the breakers of water are helping her to stand up to the sea and wind, but it's getting a bit rough now. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to try and make a sea anchor. We must lash the sail to the mast, the boom, the sprit, and both pairs of spare oars, and then throw it overboard. In theory, it should float low in the water, uh, out of the wind, you see, and, and hold us bow on to the sea. Oh. That way we shouldn't be swamped by the white caps. Sounds fine. So, let's do it. Not bad, huh? Congratulations. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Now what? Now, well, we're not traveling towards Japan. Oh, I wish I'd, I wish I'd thought to bring Wolf Larsen's chronometer and sextant. Before long, we won't know where we are by 500 miles. Oh, enough of this blue. You lie down while I take the watch till midnight. That's only three hours. By the time I wake you, the celestial designer might have brushed his slate clean and given us an entirely new picture. You're quite right. I... <clears throat> no point in dwelling on such things.
Maud. Maud. What is it? Sit up, Maud, and tell me if I'm seeing a mirage. What? Over there. Look, do you see it? It can't be Alaska. No, but it is land of some description. Can, can you swim? No. Me neither. Then we must get ashore without swimming. That surf doesn't look too inviting, does it? No, never mind. There must be an opening in the rocks somewhere. But we'll have to be quick. Very quick and very sure. You mustn't try to delude me, you know. What are you talking about? I have eyes, sir. The wind is driving us directly at that wall of surf and the rocks. I am not trying to delude you. We shall go clear, I tell you. Ha! By God, we shall go clear! God damn it! We're going clear! Ah, I beg your pardon. Don't mention it! You've convinced me! We shall go clear! Look! That headland yonder isn't part of this first promontory. There must be a bay coming up. Perhaps we'll be able to beach ourselves there. What's that sound? Do you hear it? I hear only the surf. No, no, listen. Oh, surely you can hear it now. Yes. And Maud, look! I it is a massive cove. There! You were right. Look on the beach! See Hundreds of them! It must be a rookery! Now we're saved for sure. There'll be men and cruisers to protect them from the hunters. There might even be a station ashore. Where we can land without wetting our feet. Now you're getting the idea. <sighs> ah! <laughs> We've made it! We've made it! Come, give me your hand. Oh! Oh! Don't let me go. What's the matter with me? I, I really must sit down. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It doesn't pitch and toss, you see. It's <laughs> land! Land! We're on terra firma! <gasps> There's no shortage of driftwood. And look what I found. A coffee tin. Fool! Fool! I beg your pardon. What a blithering idiot! Thought I'd done rather well to find the coffee amongst all this. No, no, it's me. I'm the idiot. Why? No matches. Not one match did I bring. No hot coffee for us. Nor soup, nor tea, nor anything. Idiot! Uh oh. Wasn't it... Uh... Crusoe, who rubbed six together. That's all very well in fiction. But I've read scores of first-hand accounts of real shipwrecked men who've tried it, and it never works. Oh, well. We've managed so far. No reason why we can't keep on managing. Oh, but look at that coffee. I know. I'm afraid I have a weakness for coffee myself. It's an excellent blend, too. I took it from Larson's private stores. He'd let me brew some up now and again. The aroma, I can tell you. All right, enough. What about trying our hand at some kind of shelter? The light's going. There's nothing to be done today. Maud. Wake up, Maud. What now? Coffee. What do you say to a cup of coffee with breakfast, hmm? Hot coffee? Piping hot? If your object is to torment me, you're succeeding. I've reconciled myself to doing without <laughs> coffee. Rouse yourself, ma'am, and give me a hand. Dig out the ammunition box and hand me a shotgun shell while I whittle these sticks into kindling. Oh, I'll need, I'll need some paper. Tear a page from my notebook, will you? Here, here's the cartridge. Good, good. Now, let's just open it up. There! Powder on the rock. Like so. And let's see if I can pry off the primer. And do you have the paper? Here it is. Excellent. Uh, pass me that rock there. Now, here goes. <laughs> <laughs> Help me with the kindling. Careful! That's it. Look at it go! Oh, Prometheus, bravo! 
Oh. Oh, dear. What's the matter? We haven't a kettle. Huh. Oh, wait a minute! What about the tin we used for bailing? Perfect! <laughs> Delicious. My compliments to the cook. Oh, coffee never tastes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's calm enough now for me to take the boat out and explore the island. Mm. There must be a station somewhere, but I'll make you comfortable here before I start. I'd like to go with you. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea. You've roughed it enough. What you need is a rest. I'd prefer to go with you. I might be able to help you a little. And what if anything happened to you? I'd be left here alone. Really, really, I think the best thing is for you to stay here. Please. S sleep and rest and, and do nothing. Please. Please. Pull to starboard a little. Aye, aye, sir. Good. Hold her at that. You see something? I'm not sure. May I have the spyglass? Yes, if you wish. Thank you. Here, you steer, will you? Of course. Yes. High up on the beach of that cove there. The wreck of a boat. Ah, I thought there was something. Sealer's boat, I think. Gazelle, number two. Yes, that'd be a sealer. Been there a long time. It's half filled with sand. Let me look. Ah, well, they... They must have got away. Really, sir, what do you take me for? I don't understand. Well, I do. I understand that if men had escaped from that boat, they would have been back here to make their fortunes from the rookery. I understand that there are probably bleached bones up there, and that apart from several thousand seals, there are only companions on this wretched island. I understand it. And the sooner you realize that I understand it, the sooner you can give up this chit-chat about a, a, a station outpost and ships popping along for a visit. It's an insult to my intelligence. Now, see what you've done. I'm meant to be the first maid of this vessel. It's hardly appropriate for the first maid to be reduced to tears. Even if they are tears of exasperation. You will kindly let me resume my steering. Tell me, am I right in thinking that we're currently sailing by what is termed a beam wind? Aye, aye. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Mm -hmm. Well, we have four walls now. I don't think they'll fall down. Hmm, good timing. It's the seventh day tomorrow. You can rest. Hardly. We have walls but no roof, and at the moment, no wherewithal for a roof. I can't use the sail, and the tarp started to leak. I read of some explorer once who used walrus skins. Beg pardon? <laughs> for a roof. We could use seal skins. Ah. I've never killed an animal. You'd never sailed a boat. In any case, we're going to need meat to get us through the winter. These supplies won't last. I know. Don't go so fast. You're leaving me behind. Oh, that bull there. I think he's looking at me. Don't panic. Now, I know men club them. The question is, how do they club them? Idea. What? Let's gather in tundra grass and thatch the roof. Nonsense. I think tundra grass will make just as good a roof. I don't want to hear any more about tundra grass. Right. Here goes. That long-maned bull there. That's right, my bucko. I'm coming for you. Oh, all his wives are moving away. Perhaps they are frightened of men after all. Oh. Uh, 
Why is he getting up on his back legs like that? Ready to run, eh, fella? I don't think he's going to run away. Watch out, Maud. Come back. Come back to the boat. Run! Are you all right? I think so. They might be awkward, but they certainly can run. And those teeth! He bit right through the oar I shoved off with. Look at that! Humphrey, let's go back to the camp. No! If other men can do it, so can I. I'll give it a minute or two, and then I'll have another crack. I wish you wouldn't! Now don't say please, please. Look, I'm sorry. If you say so, I'll turn and go back. But honestly, I'd rather stay. Very well. I don't want you saying this is what you get for bringing a woman along. Oh, if it makes you any happier, I'll leave the bulls alone this time. What about concentrating on lonely, inoffensive-looking seals? Oh, don't on. laugh! I remember reading a book of Dr. Jordan's about this. The young males, the ones not old enough to have harems of their own, called them Hoyushiki or some such name. Well, it seems to me... If we could find out where they haul out... Seems to me you've got your dander up. Well, I don't like giving up any more than you do. Or any more than I like the idea of killing such pretty creatures. Pretty? I didn't notice anything pretty about the saber-toothed beast that chased me. Prettiness is in the eye of the beholder. You lack perspective. Now, if you didn't have to get in so close... Exactly. Then... Bend, chewed up, ready to hand. <sighs> <sighs> I don't know if I can do this after all. I'm dreadfully afraid. I'm afraid and I'm, I'm not afraid. It's this miserable body, not me. Come, hold on to me. There, 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 there. Thank you. That's better. I'm all right now. I am too. Let's get this over with. There's more coffee if you want it. Thank you. How do you feel? Fine. Now it's done. <laughs> Strangely exhilarated. You know, when we got back this evening, I felt as though I was coming home. Mm, I know exactly what you mean. The world of books and bookish folk seem as a lifetime away. More like a dream memory than an actuality. It seems to me I've never done anything else except hunted and skinned and foraged. And you, too, seem a part of it. You are my... What? I am... What? You are standing the hardship well. Oh. Yes. Well, who would have thought it, eh? We've laid in our seal meat for winter, seal oil to light us by, and at last we have our huts. Admittedly, any self-respecting cow would turn up its nose at them, but never mind. <laughs> we'll be warm and comfortable for the winter. So, let's raise a billikin. To the first settlers on Endeavor Island. To us. To us. It's turning into a wild night. How good to be out of it. What is it? Why so pensive? Something's going to happen. What do you mean? I feel it. Something is coming here to us. A ship, you mean? Rescue? I don't know. But it's out there. Somewhere. Well, it's a lee shore. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather be here than arriving on a night like this. 
True enough. Time to turn in, I guess. <laughs> At least you won't have to sleep out in the boat tonight. And it will be a comfort to me to know you're just the other side of this wall. For me too. You're not frightened, are you? No. And you feel well? Perfectly well? Never better. Me too. Well, good night, Maud. Good night, Humphrey. Humphrey, wake up, Humphrey. Humphrey, wake up, Humphrey. Mm, my. Oh, my darling. Please, Humphrey, wake up. What? What is it, Ma Maud? What's the matter? Come outside. Come. Look. My God. Something woke me early. The same feeling I had last night. When I saw it there in the cove, I was terrified. I wasn't surprised. It's totally dismasted. Yes. But there's a lot of tangled stuff floating there beside it. Oh my God. The ghost lives up to its name and comes back to haunt us. It's just like a specter ship. Everything's so still. All hands sleeping, probably. They must have had a terrible night of it. It's amazing they weren't totally wrecked. What should we do? Make a run for it now, Boat? To another part of the island? I suppose. But the island's so small he'd find us eventually. <sighs> what then? We can't put out to sea. No. <sighs> We're trapped. To have made it this far, to have saved ourselves with our own bare hands, only to be at his mercy again. Quite right. I don't see anything right about it. No, Maud, listen to me. You're right. We've come too far. Learned too much. Look at that ship there. It's quiet and unsuspecting. As I said, probably all hands are exhausted after running before last night's storm. So they are at our mercy. For the moment, at least. What are you thinking of? Why not steal aboard? What about Larson? I haven't forgotten about him, believe me. I'll go aboard and settle him while he sleeps once and for all. Murder him. Execute him. There's no court anywhere could dispute it. You know I'm right, Maud. A month ago, I couldn't have done it. But now, well, I'm a different person. Very well. But I'm coming with you. I don't think you're going to... Humphrey Van Weyden! All right! Let's not wake up the whole crew. Now take the shotgun, and you can watch my back while I do the business with the knife. We're not lived in. Humphrey. We're not going to find anyone. The ship's deserted. Abandoned. You know, I think you're right. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I, I must sit uh, down. Wait. Listen. What is Shh, it? Listen. Maud. Back up the steps quickly. Here. Take the shotgun. Wait in the lee of the galley. Don't show yourself, understand? Yes. But be careful. Can you hum? That old conventional morality still unmans you. The cold's been dinned into your head from the time you lisped. And in spite of everything your reason tells you, in spite of everything I've taught you, it won't let you kill an unarmed, unresisting man. I know it. I'd hope for better things of you, hum. Me too. That's close enough, Larson. I might yet find the strength to pull these triggers. Uh, 
put the gun down. Um, I only want to ask some questions. Ask away, but keep your distance. I haven't had a chance to look around yet. What place is this? This is Endeavor Island. <laughs> Never heard of it. It's our name for it. Our? Who's our? Miss Brewster and myself. Uh. And the ghost is lying, as you can see for yourself. Bow onto the beach. Well, where's all hands? How comes it you're alone? My brother got me inside 48 hours. Through no fault of mine. Boarded me in the night with only the watch on deck. Hunters went back on me. He gave him a bigger lay. Heard him offering it. Did it right in front of me. All hands went over the side, and here I am, marooned on my own vessel. That was death's turn, I guess. All in a family, anyway. But how did you lose the masts? Look at those lanyards beside you. Well, the, they've been cut with a knife. Not quite. It was a neater job than that. He cut through them just enough to hold the shrouds until some strain was put on them. Who did? Cookie, of course. I know, though. I, I didn't see him at it, I know. Kind of even up the score, I guess. <laughs> Good for Mugridge. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll sit down and take the sunshine. How are the headaches? They, they still trouble me. I think I have one coming on now. I just uh, lie down here. Now is your chance, hum? What do you mean? You know what I mean. You got me where you want me. Laid out on the deck here before you. I'd rather you were a thousand miles away. I, 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 uh, you do, uh, uh, you do what you do. Of course you can't. I mean, what do we do now? Uh, you stay here and keep an eye on him. Here, take the shotgun. He still has a pair of revolvers in his stateroom. I'm going to take this chance while he's down to fetch them. Then I'll go to the lazarette for more supplies, and then it's back to camp, all right? Yes, all right. But please hurry. Any sign of him? No. I wonder why he doesn't come ashore. Perhaps he's still sick. Hmm. It's five days now since I left him lying on the poop deck. I I've never known one of his attacks to last that long. He might even be dying, for all we know. Oh, no such luck. But we don't know. And it's the not knowing I can't stand. Well, we could do with some more condensed milk. Go aboard again, you mean? I don't mind going. I have the revolvers now, don't forget. Yes, two revolvers. One each. Well? He's asleep in his cabin. What now? to the lazarette for those supplies. Can you manage this? It's flour, quite heavy. Uh, I think so. That's it. Just leave it there, next to the hatch. Uh, right. Uh, Some rice, I think, and then we'll head back. Yes. Uh, it won't be a moment. Free. What is it? Quickly. Uh, God, I'm 
come to this? It's too late. He saw us. Never mind. This time I won't hesitate. Wait. He's not coming this way. He's making for the steps. Not to be broke. <laughs> you come to this. Oh, God. He must have seen me. I was facing him. Look. We left the hatch off the lazarette. Ah. Get up to the sun. Must. Sunlight will do the... Ah. 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 So, I have a visitor, huh? Well, well. That's it. That's it. Uh, gotcha. Uh, welcome back aboard, Hump. Oh, no, no, you need a weight of some sort just to make sure. Oh, I know. Oh, did you see that? He's as blind as a bat. He still had enough about him to drop that cover on the hatch, thinking you were down there in the lazarette hold. I know. The devil. Grab whatever you can of these stores and let's get them on deck. I, I think he's coming back. Get to the steps, quickly. That's the best I can do. I don't think you'll be raising that hatch in a hurry. Hump! Damn you! If you hadn't been with me on lookout, I'd now be learning firsthand why it's called the Lazarette Hold. Oh, don't even think about it. Come on. I need space between me and that lunatic. It's too bad the ghost has lost her masts. Why, we could sail away in her. Don't you think so, Humphrey? I wonder. Aha, the thinker in action. <laughs> I wonder. Oh, what, for goodness sake, don't be maddening. What is it? We can do it. We can put the masts back into the ghost and sail away. How can they be done? Questions, questions. I don't know precisely how. What about Larson? Blind and helpless. If we can't outfox a blind man, what earthly use are we? Come along, let's go aboard straight away. Hello, below. I'm free. It's Larson at the hatch. Don't worry, I have the revolver here. Hello on deck. Good morning to you. What are you doing down there? Trying to scuttle my ship? And quite the opposite. I'm repairing her. What the hell are you repairing? I'm making ready to restep the masts. This is my vessel. My particular property. Damn you! I forbid it! <laughs> Time was when maybe you could, but not anymore. You're no longer the biggest bit of the ferment to gobble up the littlest bits. I'm able to eat you now. Sharing my own philosophy back down my throat, eh? I don't make the mistake of underestimating me. I won't fail this time. This is my ship, I tell you! And I forbid you to temper with it! Give over, Larson. You sound as though you had a moral right to the ship. Since when did you ever give a fig for a person's moral right? Well, I don't give a fig for yours. So... It's the biter bit. Fair enough. Um, and how are you, Miss Brewster? I'm very well, thank you, Captain Larson. But pray, how did you know I was here? Heard you breathing, of course. I want to tell you again, Hump. You'd better leave things alone. But don't you want to escape along with us? No. I intend to die here. Well, we don't. Now, 
you're going to need what they call shears. Uh, what are they? Uh, basically, a couple of spars lashed together to make an inverted V high above the deck to take the hoisting tap. Shall I turn now? Go ahead. Coil down the slack. Whoa! More nails, Skipper. Yeah. These cleats will stop the butts of the masts from sliding on the deck. Stupid of me. I'm gonna need guy ropes. I'm afraid it's getting dark. I'll not sleep until those shears are in. I wish it weren't so late. I'd like to see how it works. Oh, don't be a glutton, Humphrey. Tomorrow's only hours away, and you're so tired now you can hardly stand. Mm. <sighs> what about you? You must be exhausted. Mm. You've worked hard and nobly. I'm proud of you, Maud. Mm. Not half so proud as I am of you, nor with half the reason. Oh, if our friends could see us now. Have you ever paused to consider our appearance? Oh, enough. I don't want to have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> now we must turn in. Another busy day ahead. Humphrey! Humphrey, wake up! What? What is it? Oh, Humphrey, something's happened! Calm yourself, Maud. What is it? The shears! The shears have gone! What do you mean, gone? By God, if Larson has sabotaged our work! Everything is wrecked. Even the windlass. Yes. He's cut the lines to the masts and booms. They're adrift somewhere. He deserves to die. And God forgive me. I'm not man enough to be his executioner. There, there. It will all come right. We must just start over, that's all. Oh, Maud, you're right. I know. <laughs> it's childish for him to do such things. And for me to grow angry over them, for that matter. We will start over. Over. Here he comes now. Ignore him. He's come to see how we take it. At least he won't have that satisfaction. He's going down portside. Come, let's slip to starboard. Good morning. Oh, I know you're aboard. Good morning, I say. I didn't seek, is it, Hump? As you wish. As you wish. Isn't that one of the masts? Huh? Well spotted. We'll get to seaward and then put a line around it. Huh? I'm no mechanic, but I think that should turn. I'll try it. <sighs> it will do, Humphrey. It will do. <laughs> All right, Maud. Wind in when I heave. One, two. <clears throat> That's it. Again. <clears throat> oh. Shears are too short, aren't they? Yes. Oh. Well, they must be rigged again. Stand by the windlass, Maud. As soon as these extra cleats are done, we can give it a go. There. There. I'm free. I think I hear him on the steps. It's all right, Maud. Just stay well clear of him. Um. Um. I know you're there. Be fair now. I've left you alone, haven't I? And, and hump. My head is bad. He has one of his attacks. Hush. Uh, uh, 
Oh, oh Miss Brewster, is that you? Huh? Ah! Uh, you help me, won't you? <laughs> you knew what this pain was like. I can't. I can't make it. I, uh, oh. Humphrey, he's collapsed. Stay back, Maud. He may be play acting even yet. <gasps> Listen to how he's breathing. Humphrey, I think he may be dying. The least we can do is to make him comfortable. Give me your jacket. I'll put it under his head. No, I'll do it. Come along now, mister. You never learn. I told you not to underestimate me. Are you all right? I'm free. Yes. yes. I'm fine. I'm fine. The same thing's happened again. His, his feigning has brought on a genuine attack. But he's out cold. God. Look at me. He brings us all to his level. Shh. Shh. Dear woman, it's all right. You're not to blame. There are handcuffs in his stateroom. From today, we'll live in the cabin, and Larson will be our prisoner. No, no, no more. Thank you, ma'am. You hardly touched it. You must keep up your strength. You're very thoughtful, but I can't stomach any more. There's no need for these. Handcuffs, you know, hump. You're too good an actor. The handcuffs stay on. I'm telling you, that was the last play of the wolf. My whole right side's gone. It seems asleep. I can't move arm nor leg. I'm paralyzed. It's too bad. I'd like to have done for you, hump. Thought I had that much left in me. Why? Ah, uh, just to be alive. To be living and doing, to be the biggest bitter of her men to the end. But to die this way, conscious, knowing that the lines are going down, but powerless to do anything about it. Think on your soul that... Bosh! The soul has nothing to do with it. I have a good idea of what's happening. The attack on my brain, the tumor or whatever it is, is leaving the higher psychical centers untouched. I can remember, I can think and reason. When that goes, I go. I am not. Never mind the soul. The next thing you must concern yourself with, Madame Nurse, is bed sores. Do you know your smile is crooked? Huh? Then I shall smile no more. I told you my right sight was paralyzed. Now maybe you believe me. <laughs> so, my smile is crooked, is it? <laughs> well, from, from now on, you must presume that I smile internally with my soul, huh? If you please. My soul. Look, man. My face is still, but my soul is smiling at you. Excuse me. I have work to do. Hmm. She's turned into a good, sturdy woman. Fine stern on her. Watch what you say about her, mister. Must be a comfort in the night. Pity she hasn't got a real man to service her. I see what you're about. Well, go ahead, goad me all you want. I'm not coming near you. I told you, hump. I'm all played out. Well, here's something to chew on while you lie there. You're right about me and Maud. She's but one small woman. 
And at the same time, she's the universe. <laughs> I'm closer to her than I've been to anybody in my life. But what Maud and I have isn't anything to do with your squalid imaginings. You know nothing about women. I know Maud. And I know that I love her. Love? That's right. I love her like I love my life. Because she is my life. She's made me what I am. And what about poor old Maud? One small bash. She's a red-blooded female after all. Be quiet. What does she get out of this high-flown talk? Think on that, hump, while you revel in your love of life and your precious selfhood. Think on what a woman needs if she's to get to be a real woman. Shut your filthy mouth! Damn you. Well, there's a smile or two left in me yet. Well, Maud, only the jib to go on now. What with all the patching and shortening the foresail and the mainsail are an ill-fitting suit for so trim a craft as the ghost. Maud, about Larson. Yes, what is it? I, I know you regard it as your duty to nurse him. But maybe I should see to him from now on. But why? Well, I... I just don't want him talking to you with his crazy ideas. He's got a vile mind. And, well, he might... I appreciate your concern. But as it happens, Larson won't be talking to anybody anymore. Maud? What do you mean? Oh, he's still alive. Just. But he couldn't manage to speak this morning. The power of speech is gone. Well, another line down. I've given him pencil and paper. <laughs> What's the matter? What is it? When will it end? I hate myself for it. But today I found myself wishing him dead. Come on, don't break down on me now. Tomorrow we sail, and all will be right, I promise. Come, give me your hands. Oh, don't look at my hands. The dirt and, and weather beat will never come out. I should be ashamed carrying on like this. No, don't take your hands away. Please. Please. Stand by the windlass! Aye, aye, mister! We can never lift the anchor aboard in this narrow place. We'd be on the rocks first. What can you do? Slip it! And when I do, you must do your first work on the windlass. Now, I'll have to cut along to the wheel, and at the same time, you must be hoisting the jib. All right? Aye, aye, sir! All right! Here it goes! Humphrey, you can't stay at the wheel indefinitely. Please, heave to and rest. We're making at least 11 knots. I must hold to this as long as I can. I'll reef the sails at sundown. <sighs> Maud, are you there? What's for breakfast? Maud? I'm here. With Larson. His life flickered out at last this morning. But he still lives somewhere. I believe that. I'll find some canvas. We must put the body over the side. <sighs> yes. I suppose so. I'll make him ready. Look. What is it? There's a piece of paper crumpled up in his hand. He's, he's, he's written on it. 
The last words of Wolf Larsen. What does it say? Just some scrawled letters. B O S H. <sighs> ah, well. Skeptical and invincible to the end. I remember only one part of the service. And the body shall be cast into the sea. But Humphrey... I'm sorry, Maud. I do unto him precisely what he did to another. Mind yourself while I tilt the hatch cover. <clears throat> Goodbye, Lucifer. Proud spirit. Here. You've earned it. Thank you. Oh, I believe I'm going to cry in spite of myself. It'll do you good. I ought to be ashamed. But after all, I'm only one small woman. Where did you get that phrase? What phrase? One small woman. It's my phrase. I coined it. Did you now? I've known it all my life. It was Daddy's sort of pet name for my mother. Well, it's my pet phrase, too. For your mother? No, Maud. Not for my mother. Humphrey, did you hear that? Yes, I did. Let's get on deck. <laughs> there. Look. To leeward. Smoke. Where's the spyglass? Huh. What do you see? It's a steamer, all right. And flying American colors. Go! We must run a signal. Oh, Maud. What is it? The one thing I haven't done is set up a flag halyard. Oh, but we need no distress signal. Just look at the state of us. <laughs> You're right. They have only to see our patched up rig. <laughs> Maud, we're saved. I hardly know whether to be glad or not. Need I? There's no need. Though the telling of it would be sweet. So sweet. <laughs> One kiss more, dear love before they come. <sighs> In The Sea Wolf by Jack London, Wolf Larsen was played by Jack Clough, Humphrey Van Weyden by Kerry Shale, and Maud Brewster by Shelley Thompson. The Sea Wolf was adapted for radio in four parts by Ed Thomason. Original music was composed and played by Elizabeth Parker of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. Technical presentation was by Roger Danes, Keith Graham and Ian Pratt. Was directed by Adrian Bean.